city because one of the mission is conducting research based in the community service and conducting research uh, in the field of the epi epidemiology that produce publication, policy recommendation, and intervention innovation. And I believe that in Diponegoro University uh, can produce human resource with good competence, good personality, good mentality, and good uh, placement preparation. Uh, that is the reason why I chose uh, Magister Epidemiology in Diponegoro University. Thank you. Assalamualaikum, Dek Dayan. Waalaikumsalam, warahmatullahi Ibu. Assalamualaikum, Prof. Rapor, Matur Nuhun Sangat, Karawanipun. Waalaikumsalam, warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Oke, sehat-sehat, Ibu. Alhamdulillah, ini Prof. Pur kok sudah siap? Mau Gini. kemana nih, Prof? Ini salam Prof. Pur tadi, Ibu Pur nih. Oh, Nah, kemarin. kemarin diingatkan Mas Panji, Prof sudah ada undangan loh, Prof. Oke, saya ikut ya lagi. Sebisanya. Oke. Mas Tanur sangat, Prof. Oke. Dimulai jam berapa ini, Mbak Dwi? Bu Dwi? Uh, sekitar 8.15, nge. Oke. Ini soalnya dari pasca pimpinan juga dereng rawu, Prof. Oke. Oke. Sudah banyak ini 121, 122 yang ikut. Iya, ini makanya ini coba saya calling ini pimpinan. Ada punya Prof. Iya. Iya. Mama 
Christmas.
This is Musafir. I'm from Rwanda. Rwanda is a country in East Africa. Now I'm studying Master of Epidemiology in Universitas de Ponegoro. I choose UNDIP because UNDIP is among the best universities in the world. And secondly, they have a good Master of Epidemiology. When I say it's a good one, because they have good laboratory settings. They also have uh, uh, good lecturers, they are professional, and anything you need to do a research in only it's there. So I may encourage anyone, anywhere, if you want to be successful in your career, especially in epidemiology, I want to be a good epidemiologist, as me, because uh, according to the experience I have in my country, uh, I worked in different hospitals, I worked at in, in different companies, uh, health companies, so, uh, and even when you see the Africa continent, you see there are different pandemics, so I decided to choose epidemiology and study it in uh, UNDIP, Universitas de Ponegro, so that I may help my country and even my continent to fight against these pandemics, to promote the well-being of population in my country. So anyone, anywhere, come to study in UNDIP if you ha want to be a, a successful researcher, a good epidemiologist. Thank you, everyone. Well, I'm Alotu Simenes Bello. I am general practitioner. I have already worked for eight years of experience. I decided to take my Magister Epidemiology in Diponegoro University because my country is a development country and we have many problems about the public health, especially in epidemiology. And the other reason, we all know that epidemiology is the core science of public health and it's also a science and art that to prevent disease, prolong life, improve health through organized efforts. Uh, now, less able choices made by the community, organization, government, and individuals. Uh, and the other, I choose Master Epidemiology in Diponegoro University because one of the mission is conducting research based in the community service and conducting research uh, 
in the field of the epi epidemiology that produce publication, policy recommendation, and intervention innovation. And I believe that in Diponegoro University uh, can produce human resource with good competence, good personality, good mentality, and good uh, placement preparation. Uh, that is the reason why I chose uh, Magister Epidemiology in Diponegoro University. Thank you. Kita berikutnya kayaknya nggak bisa di Karena kita kan berapa sih? Dua belas sih ya. Mungkin kita empat lima miliar. Panitia itu siap, gimana? Mbak Bunga, bisa dimulai Mbak Bunga? Oke, okay. um, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We would like to say thank you for attending this seminar in this bright and lovely day. I'm your host, Vitari Bunga. Would like to welcome all the participants in today's seminar with the title, Preparedness for the Threat of the Next Wave of the COVID-19 Pandemic. First of all, we would like to say our gratitude to God for the blessing so that we can gather here today in this seminar. We would like to welcome the Honorable Dr. Sularto, uh, the Dean of Postgraduate Program in Diponegoro University, also the Honorable Vice Dean of Postgraduate Program, Professor Hardiato. We also would like to welcome the Honorable Head Program of Master of Epidemiology Program, Dr. Dewi Sutiningsi, the Honorable the Coordinator of Indonesia One Health University Network, Professor Agus Wondono, also the Honorable Professor Suhario and Professor Sri Puryono. We also would like to welcome the Honorable, our keynote speaker, 
Dr. Sangden Monsum, our moderator, Dr. Henry Setiawan, and our beloved committee and participants. Before we start this seminar, uh, let's pray this event will run well and all the materials will be beneficial for us. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, pray begin. Amen, pray finished. As your host, I would like to remind you that all microphones should be muted, except while singing our national anthem or asking questions in the discussions. Okay, now ladies and gentlemen, please turn on your camera and unmute your microphone because we will be singing our national anthem, Indonesia Raya. Okay, let's proceed to the video. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, please turn on the camera and unmute your microphone because we will be singing our national anthem, Indonesia Raya. <laughs> Don't speak, Hannah is speaking. Okay, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Now, to open this very interesting event, we would like to invite Professor Hardianto as the Master of Science to deliver the our opening speech. Professor Hardianto, Hardia, Professor Hardianto, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Batari Bunga. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, my voice is uh, well received. Yes. Okay. Sir. Okay. Uh, I would like to welcome you all to the School of Postgraduate Study. Although we just meet on uh, in front of the screens. First of all, I would like to convey the apology from our dean since uh, he has another activity which made him not able to attend these interesting events. Uh, Honorable Speaker, uh, Dr. Ramon Sung, and Head of Master Program of Epidemiology, moderators, uh, all participants. Today is the great events, not only for uh, the school, but also for the Epidemiology Society in Indonesia. As we have a visiting lecture uh, today, organized uh, by the Master Program of Epidemiology. And the topic is very, very interesting and is much fit to the current uh, pandemic COVID-19 uh, situa uh, situations. We do believe that the COVID-19 is not only devastating occurrence, 
uh, for Indonesia, but also becomes uh, global problems to other countries as well in, in the world. Uh, we know that uh, the first case in Indonesia was found in March uh, 2020, I believe. And in that year, we struggle with the first peak and the second peak was found also in July 2021. Indeed, we do not expect to have uh, another uh, wave or maybe the third wave, although it will depend uh, our behavior in keeping the health protocols, including always be aware, although we have been vaccinated. But if the third wave come, I think we, are, we all must be ready, not only uh, as citizens, but also uh, governments uh, must be ready as well in providing COVID uh, care facilities and also frontliner worker. And are we ready for this? Uh, it all depends on us. Because I think problem of the first wave uh, were not the problem uh, of the second wave and the problem of the second wave uh, will not uh, be problem for the third uh, wave uh, later on. But I think all the questions uh, will be answered today when the visiting lecture today by provided by Professor Dr. Uh, Mansum. And on behalf of the school, I would like to thank again for your knowledge sharing, uh, Dr. Mansum. It will be very important for us to get new perspective about the COVID-19 threat from other country, including Thailand. And also to master program of epidemiology, I would like to personally thanks for this, uh, making these events happen and all participants for joining these events. And by the name of Allah, I'm officially opening this uh, visiting lecture by Dr. Mansums and uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Thank you very much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Prof. Hadiato, Hadianto for the opening speech. So we would be gladly open this event. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now we would like to proceed to our group photo. So ladies and gentlemen, please turn on your camera and the committee will take the photo. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, please turn on the camera. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we will still be waiting for another participants to open the camera. So the committee will take the photo. Okay, we will still be waiting for another participants. Thank you for all who has opened the camera. Okay, we will still be waiting for another participants to turn on the camera.
Okay, thank you for... We will still be waiting for another participants to open the camera. Okay, we will start from the page one, take photo. Uh, everybody please smile. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, page two, one, two, three. Page three, one, two, three. Page four, okay, one, two, three. Page five, one, two, three. Page six, one, two, three. Page seven, one, two, three. Page eight, one, two, three. Page nine, one, two, three. Okay. We appreciate the enthusiasm from all of participants. Okay. Before we jump on to our next agenda, we would like to remind you that all microphones should be muted except while asking questions in the discussions. We also would like to remind you that we will be having quiz at the end of the session. So please remain seated until the end of the event. So now we arrive at our most awaited core event. We will be talking about COVID-19, a topic that we all have been really passionate about. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our, uh, so before we start, our um, core event. We would like to make sure that our keynote speaker is already in the room. Okay, um, yeah. Hello, welcome Dr. Sangdun. Uh, yeah, okay, and we also already have our moderator here. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our keynote speaker, Dr. Sangdun from Dr. Sangdun Munsum, the um, Assistant Professor on the Department of Protozoology from University of Mahido, Thailand, and our moderator, Dr. Uh, Dr. Gigi Henry Setiawan, MS, from um, Postgraduate uh, Master of Epidemiology Postgraduate School, Diponegoro University. But first, um, let me read the CV of our moderator. So our moderator for today is Dr. Dr. Gigi Henry Setiawan Susanto, Master of Science. Um, Dr. Henry graduated from University of Gajah Mada in Yogyakarta uh, as a dentist and finished Master of Epidemiology in University of Indonesia in 2000 and finished um, Doctor degree for medicine in University Diponegoro in 2009. We, we, uh, Dr. Henry Setiawan has several publications, um, for example, in Devoid Fever and Anemia and uh, dental, dental, cavity, dental Caries and also in AIDS and Air Pollutions. Dr. Henry also joined several organizations, for example, the associations of the Indonesian dentists and also the associations of public health Indonesia and also the University of Gajah Mada alumni and University of Diponegoro alumni. Throughout his life, Dr. Henry also has um, achieved many honors Dr. Henry was the best graduate for 
the dentist in 1987 and also the best graduate in uh, his master's degree and also the best uh, the best lecturer in 1993 in Diponego University Faculty of Medicine, and also has won several um, publications. For example, um, the best poster in the uh, national seminar for the associations of public health Indonesia, and also in, in, in ninth annual conference of the International Society for Environmental Epidemiology in Taipei, Taiwan. So without further ado, we would like to welcome our keynote speaker, Dr. Sang Dun Monsum, and our moderator, Dr. Henry Setiawan. The floor is yours. Thank you, uh, uh, <coughs> Miss, uh, Miss uh, Mas, uh, Ceremony. Yeah. Uh, uh, suara saya bisa didengar ya? Yes, sir. Okay, okay, thank you. Welcome to all participants of the webinar entitled Preparedness for the Treat of the Next Wave of the COVID-19 Pandemic, yeah, which will be delivered by Assistant Professor Seng Duin A. Monsum from Thailand, yeah, One Health University Network, yeah. Selamat datang, Jing Jing Tang Yap. Yeah. Greet to Professor Suharyo Hadi Saputra, our senior, Prof. Sri Puryoni, uh, Dr. Dr. Hewan Dwi Sutiningse, uh, as a coordinator magister program, and also uh, other senior. Yeah. To colleagues from Port Health Office throughout Indonesia, as well as a doctors and public health graduate, as well as epidemiology master and scholar, uh, selamat datang ya. Yeah. Before uh, I read the speaker resumes, we remind you once again turn off sound or mute uh, while the speaker is delivering the material. The discussion session will be delivered at the end of the session in three ways: raising your hand and conveying it orally writing to Zoom chat it uh, in Indonesia or English or via YouTube chat, yeah. Okay, uh, Assistant Professor Dr. Sengdun E. Monsum is currently a teaching staff of Faculty of Tropical Medicine, Maidol University and serve as a coordinator of Thailand One Health University Network or Tohun yeah? and Tohun National Coordinating Office. She holds BSc in Medical Technology from Chiang Mai University and MSc and PhD uh, in Molecular Genetic and Genetic Engineering from Institute of Molecular Bioscience, Mahidol University, Thailand, yeah, with full support from the Royal Golden Jubilee PhD Scholarship, Thailand Research Fund or TRF. She was a postdoctoral. She was postdoctoral uh, fellow of School of Crop Production Technology. Suriname University of Technology in uh, Nakhon Ramp Sima, Thailand, yeah, during 19, uh, 2011 to 2012. As national level, she has officially appointed as Secretary of National Strategic Committee on Preparedness, Prevention, and Solving of Emerging Infectious Disease. Yeah. This met with the uh, uh, COVID pandemics now, yeah, in 1970 to 1921. Future Workforce Development Working Group and Deputy Chair as uh, of National Strategic Committee on Preparedness, Prevention, and Solving of Emerging Infectious Disease in uh, uh, 2017 and 2021 in academic institution. In academic area, she is a director of a Doctor of Philosophy program in Tropical Medicine, or international program, Faculty of Tropical Medicine, Mahidol University, initiating change of improvement 
uh, in curriculum structure and implementation of the program since 2019. Yeah. She has served as a facilitator and consultant for outcome-based education program development and implementation assume uh, implementation assessment of some academic institute in Thailand. She also managed one health implementation for Tohun, yeah, and act as a trainer for the OH capacity development at both national and regional level. Her research focus on immunological and molecular studies and diagnosis development for tropical disease. Yeah. I have uh, I have seen uh, nine publication from uh, <clears throat> Science Direct. Yeah, it's a very interesting uh, study, particularly bacterial and protozoal disease. Her research and student have been awarded by the RF Middle University and DED in nine, uh, 20, uh, 23. Yeah. To shorten the time and invite the esteemed speaker, Assistant Professor Seng Duen A. Monsum, to present his material. We will start from now, yeah, at the uh, X uh, 2044, uh, and it stop. Uh, I hope that we will be finished at the uh, 11 to 11 uh, 30 to continue with discussion or uh, question and answer. Please, Professor Monsoon, this is your time. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Professor Susanto. And uh, uh, good morning, uh, uh, representative of Dean's, uh, Professor Hadianto, and uh, chair of master program in epidemiology and all of the distinguished uh, participants here. And thank you very much for a nice introduction for me, right? So first of all, I would like to say that I'm a molecular biologist, and today I will talk about something that touch about your expertise, which is the epidemiology. So, uh, so I would like to say that here, what I would like to tell you today, maybe from my experience and what uh, Thailand One Health University uh, Network had done, right, for uh, eight years or 10 years since the, we start the um, uh, like the project uh, support from the USAID under the uh, name of Respond and One Health Workforce and One Health Workforce Next Generations. And so, uh, I would like to start my presentation. Okay. So I hope that everyone could see uh, my slide well. And here's my wife also. So uh, the topic of my talk today is talks about the planet for trade of the next wave of the COVID-19 pandemic. So first of all, I would like to show you this map, right? So uh, this map may be launched around uh, 2014, and I keep showing this to the audience when I give the talk. And it said that here is the, uh, the map that shows the hotspot or the prediction of the global emerging viral disease that uh, um, now currently emerging and maybe re-emerging and uh, so supposed to cause the pandemic. And the people uh, might think that, oh, maybe it's a far away from us, right? That, uh, because uh, back to uh, five years or uh, 10 years back, we don't have any uh, serious pandemic right now. And then when we uh, show this map, to the people, people quite aware that, okay, so there, there are several uh, outbreaks of the infectious disease trade. Uh, and in year 2019, when the COVID-19 uh, pandemic happened, right, and it caused about 50 million infected peoples, 
right? And uh, then in the same month of year 2021, the uh, number of the infected case raised about five times. So the people and everyone aware and we everyone recognize the uh, severity or the uh, negative impact of this uh, uh, disease pandemic. And when we talk about the dead kid or the burden of the infectious disease, right? And uh, some people, maybe you already familiar with this picture that shows uh, about the infect, uh, infected case and the dead case, right? And for the COVID-19 compared to other disease right now is the, the number uh, already beyond uh, every uh, the disease outbreak that happened before. Currently, right, uh, we have about 5 million dead due to the uh, COVID-19 infection, right? So uh, we talked about the uh, like uh, uh, number of the infection uh, on a number of the death case. Uh, in the area of the uh, public health and medical field are no more, right? We we quite sad. We don't we don't want to see any date, right? But once it happened, it also have something that beyond the case, uh, in infected case and death case, uh, like uh, uh, when we have the uh, outbreak of the infectious disease, right? It's caused the uh, uh, like a negative impact uh, to the economy. And especially for the COVID-19, we see that it changed our lifestyle and it caused the social disruption a lot. And it also lead to the political consequence, many change that happened. And someone said that we don't have uh, the, we could not back to the, our, uh, our uh, life that we a family before. So the people say that, okay, this is the new normal. And at my faculty, Dean called this now normal already. It's not new anymore. So, and when we talk about the negative impact of the infectious disease, normally we talk about the investment or the budget that we gonna spend for the management of the uh, like a disease outbreak. And here you can see that uh, this year, uh, when I joined the one international forum called Global Health Security Agenda, right? Uh, we have the steering committee meeting and leadership meeting here in, uh, in uh, Phuket, Bangkok, right? And they update about the burden and the uh, uh, the money that's supposed to uh, predict to spend to manage the COVID-19 pandemic is about 10 trillion uh, US dollar already. Let's see when it's four trillion dollar that we're going to spend for this management. Uh, someone said that it's about 100, it's, it's equal to uh, the budget that we spent uh, for the uh, like 100 fiscal years of Thailand already. I don't know for other country, let imagine that uh, this is uh, the thing that quite serious for us, right? So now you know and you aware already that we suffering, we suffer from the infectious disease like a COVID-19 pandemic. And in fact, we, also have the word disruption. Uh, so people uh, talks about make that trend like a rapid uh, urbanization, demographic and social change, shift in the economic power, climate change, and technological breakthrough, like many change, like they call make that trend. And it's also called as the word risk disruption, right? And some uh, World Bank or some people also said that now our world we call worker. Worker world is volatility, uncertainty, complexity, ambiguity. So we cannot predict what gonna happen. And uh, we have uh, no one uh, can uh, ensure that it's gonna uh, happen like this, are gonna save or not. So we call worker world. And when we facing with some challenge, 
the grand challenge like this, right? I would like to say that uh, for Tolman, we can see the opportunity that one, we have to think about the ap uh, adaptability, right? How much that we can adapt, how much that we be resilient to the problem, how, how, how fast that we can move on, right? When we fall down in terms of the economy, public health, uh, like a response, and uh, how fast that we can uh, like, uh, uh, like uh, stand up and move on for this. And we also have the opportunity to develop and improve something that we learn from the COVID-19 pandemic that we might are not good or not good enough yet, or it's a weakness in terms of the public health preparedness, response and control, as well as how we manage the thing, right? As well as the people, right? Uh, we need to think about how to develop the like a human capacity, right? So uh, based on the experience uh, the lesson learned from the COVID-19. And also when we facing with some problem, the people will have the chance to, uh, we, we are forced to develop innovation and intervention to deal, to cope with that. So these are three uh, area that uh, we think about and I will talk one by one, right? So how, we do that and how prepare that. Uh, so we, when the disease, uh, like a, a outbreak or pandemic happened, you can see that for this example of COVID-19, right? Uh, so this disease, when it's happened, is, is originates from the, some uh, break, uh, like uh, uh, some, uh, like uh, um, some uh, failure or some uh, disconnection between the uh, animal, human, and environmental health. So we assume that if we have human have the good health, animal have good health, and women have the good condition, no one will have the disease or no one gonna have the health problem, right? So when the COVID-19 uh, like, uh, uh, immerse. So we know that, okay, first, uh, we, our health is not healthy anymore. We are suffer from the disease and uh, some animal also serve at the reservoir and can transmit the, uh, like, uh, can carry the pathogen to us. And when we facing with the uh, climate change, it also promote the uh, like emergence of this disease or the severity of disease, right? That so this is the the thing that showing you that so everything are connected, especially for the factor that from animal, human, and environmental health. And one is have the imbalance of this or disconnection of this thing, right? It will result in the public health and health problem. So when we have the COVID-19, let's imagine that uh, you know that the people try to predict that, okay, the COVID-19 might be uh, start from here, bad, right? So bad, my service is so poor and the people try to correct the uh, a number of bad and uh, detects for the virus, right? That. And we thought that most of, and, and not we thought that from the literature review and research, we found that most of the, the disease that uh, occur uh, in the human are zoonotic, 70%, 60 to 70% are zoonotic uh, disease, right? Or so it's transmit and it's caused the uh, disease in animal, especially for wise uh, animal. And then when the, we have the uh, higher number of animal uh, infected, a uh, wild animal, and then because of the land youth chain, right, and landscape chain, we have the very close contact between the human animal and, and wild animal. And then when we have this close contact is caused, uh, is lead to the high chance 
to uh, trans to carry over the the pathogen or the disease from the infected wild animal to the human or to the domestic animal. So how the uh, the pathogen or the disease carry over and amplify that is because spill over, right? So and the people thought that so and take a look at this graph. Any effort, any intervention that if we can uh, like apply and for the early detection of the disease or the pathogen uh, in here in the small population of the uh, wild animal, so we can block and control the spillover or the amplification of the disease or even the consequent. Uh, outbreak or pandemic of this disease in the human, right? So that is the thing that we expect and, and we know, right? And right now here, I just got this publication, maybe it's a few uh, days ago that they try to, uh, they discuss about uh, the SARS coronavirus that caused the COVID-19 disease right now. If is, is the zoonotic disease uh, or the, it's called an emerging disease, infectious disease, right? For the zoonotic zoonos, so it means that the pathogen can cause the disease in the animal, right? And then can transmit to the human and cause the disease in the human, we call zoonos or zoonotic disease. And for the one emerging disease here, infectious disease, in, it means that uh, normally is uh, the, uh, the, the disease is occur and transmit between the human to human, right? That's, and most of them are the uh, animal independent, right? That. And so they also give the example of the, uh, what, what we call the zoonos, uh, uh, zoonotic disease, right? Labi and track. Uh, the helminthic uh, infection like echinococcosis and the Hendra uh, viral infection, like uh, and some Nipah, some MERS and the uh, uh, flu influenza also caught at the zoonotic disease or the pathogen or zoonos like that. And for to take a look for SARS or the COVID-19, the cause COVID-19, West Nile, Zika, and something, right? Most of them, when they uh, listened back and reviewed, they found that most of them here are transmit through the, uh, like, uh, uh, the hum between human and human. Uh, and some of them, uh, by, uh, like, uh, most of them are, uh, uh, like a transmit from the domestic animal, only a one percent that a few percent that uh, transmit from the wild animals, right? That so right now the people say that for the update for the epidemiologist, so uh, someone proposed that uh, SARS coronavirus maybe uh, they propose a new name of this, they call reverse zoonosis or zoo anthroponesis. So it means that the human that can transmit the uh, virus or the disease to the animal. Like uh, in Thailand now, we detect the uh, co uh, coronavirus uh, in dog like that. And we thought that it's supposed to transmit from the infected human. Case, right? So from those one also have the uh, some uh, some news information that the epidemiologists or the people in the field can update at least. So we know that the maybe uh, when the people try to search for the animal, uh, the reservoir that have the uh, colon SAR colon COVID. So and they don't see, and that's why the people thought that maybe. It's not from the animal, but our cell, human, that transmit to uh, the animal, right? That in the reward way, right? And here I could not explain all, but it's just uh, uh, some reason that the people try to claim that the SARS coronavirus is uh, um, is the 
uh, like a reverse sunos, right? That and also uh, they try to claim that most of the viral uh, uh, like uh, disease occur right now, so are uh, from domestic rather than the uh, like uh, uh, wildlife and wildlife contribute only 1%, right? And also the, uh, this is the things that I would like to update, right? So when, uh, let, let's take a look here. I think that you know very well about the, at the epidemiologist, you know about the transmission route and transmission pathway, right? That. And so when we know that for uh, the zoonotic disease, right? Uh, the the component in the transmission pathway uh, include the human, uh, maybe uh, serve at the reservoir or host, right? That and and then uh, for the animal and some the environment, right? That uh, that can uh, uh, contribute in the uh, disease emergence or the severity. So. What gonna be the thing that we supposed to do to prepare ourselves for the next wave? Is the first thing we have to have holistic surveillance. So it means that uh, here I would like to show you here is from the government of the UK, some uh, university uh, that uh, have the partnering with the FAO, OIE, WHO, and take a look the uh, reviews the uh, surveillance system like uh, throughout the world like and they found that here the publication they take a look most of the publication right now uh, they re uh, they do the surveillance in the uh, oh, sorry in the animal uh, in human sorry in human this color and uh, some right uh, uh, take a look uh, like uh, or do did the surveillance in the animal in the solid back one bra and now you can see that the trend that the people try to uh, surveillance both human animal increase more and more so this is uh, something that we are close to what we call a uh, semi holistic surveillance system right that and here also show you a uh, very good uh, figure that uh, before, right? We have the most of the surveillance uh, done, have been done uh, in the human only and some portion uh, done in the animal only. And only few percent that are done with the board, take a look at the human and animal side. And right now, so there are more uh, like a surveillance that uh, take a look both uh, human and animal. So to ensure that, uh, to ensure the zoonotic transmission or reverse zoonotic transmission and decide intervention uh, or the early detection uh, to stop or uh, to prevent the outbreak or pandemic of those, uh, the disease that uh, occur uh, in uh, human or animal, right? So, here, so, and for us, I also have uh, I conduct some research, right? And because I, I, I serve as the coordinator for uh, uh, Thailand One Health um, uh, University Network. So uh, we try to promote, to use the One Health approach to uh, do the research education and service, right? That, and my student, one, I think that's uh, my student, she is a medical doctor from Indonesia also. Uh, she uh, take a look, right? Uh, the holistic surveillance of the uh, like uh, uh, diarrhea causing agent in one uh, like uh, endemic area in Thailand. And she take a look uh, or uh, detects the pathogen and the risk from uh, human animal as well as the environment. So that's why I call the holistic surveillance. So we take a look three uh, key components of health. And then when we got that data, we don't stop, we didn't stop at that, but we gather the people 
the stakeholder that involved, right? Local authority, villager, uh, like and prof uh, health professional and practitioner uh, in that area to sit together and decide the intervention or solution to uh, to cope with this problem. And we found that after the invention, uh, the uh, uh, prevalent or the incident of the or of the uh, diarrhea causing aging in that area so drop down significantly so this is a something that show you that so when we have uh, the uh, like a holistic uh, surveillance and uh, then followed by the uh, multi sectoral uh, co uh, collaboration uh, to decide intervention, maybe it gonna be uh, provide you the uh, what we call prompt and more effective uh, solution of the problem. So that is the one uh, things that we can do if we would like to prepare ourselves for the next uh, pandemic of the emerging infectious disease. And I also take a look that uh, from the same study that I showed you before about surveillance system, uh, right now we, there are, normally we use the, uh, what we call conventional uh, surveillance system that go to uh, see the pathogen or the, uh, in the animal, human or the risk factor from the environment, right? That. And now there are more uh, novel surveillance system that we can apply and makes our, what we call picture more clear and more, con uh, more, more informative. And then when we have more clear picture and more information in the our uh, surveillance system, so the policy maker or even the implementator can decide the right uh, solution or intervention to solve those problem, to tackle with those problem. One uh, surveillance that gonna be uh, novel and can use for uh, like uh, um, dealing with the neck pandemic is they call syndromic surveillance. So uh, we, they use the clinical and health related information, right? Uh, before the diagnosis of the disease, right? And uh, use that uh, like a pre, they call use the pre-diagnostic data, right? To, this, uh, to decide the more effective and rapid detection of the disease outbreak and prevention of the disease outbreak like that. The second one that because the, some of the viral uh, uh, disease and pandem um, pandemics, um, viral uh, uh, disease pandemic right now are from animal, right? So uh, some uh, surveillance, they call animal uh, sentinel surveillance also propose uh, to uh, do something that's specific to a subpopulation of the animal and to enhance the disease detection and improve the cost. Uh, so this is going to be cost effectiveness of the surveillance. So use not use so much uh, uh, like uh, investment on that, right? Yeah. And another uh, uh, area of the novel surveillance is using what they call participatory epidemiology. I think that you know very well because you are in this field. It's a practical approach, right? That to uh, acknowledge or empowerment or recruit the stakeholder and in the uh, design implementation and evaluation of the things or even the intervention that you decide, right? And uh, so this gonna make like a, it's gonna be collaborative effort from the stakeholder, right? That. And um, the last one that might fit with the a new era of the pandemics because most of uh, the pandemics right now, we cannot predict and we have uh, uh, the viral uh, pandemic and virus have very high rate of the mutation, right? So to, uh, to decide some intervention uh, with 
uh, this thing, right? Uh, so we have to have the surveillance that use novel information technology and data source and the technology uh, gonna use for the data collection and also visualization and communication. Example of this uh, are the internet-based surveillance system Right, you might heard about Promet or some system that uh, wrote down here. And mobile phone technology in some country, they use the app, mobile app, and for the reporting, right? In Thailand, we have PODD that, uh, al uh, that allows the people, the villager, to uh, input the data when they see the uh, what we call abnormal health event in their. Uh, the community and report to the public health, local public health authority, and then send to the uh, public health, uh, Ministry of Public Health Thailand for uh, author actions like that. And now they also talks about digital pen. When we correct the data, normally uh, the conventional way, we use the paper bit and try to write out in the computer. And right now the digital pen will allow you to write, uh, use uh, what we call to record using hand. Uh, like a written text, right? That, and then you can uh, transform that to the database later on. I'm not sure that uh, here I saw someone raised hand. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm not sure that now we we could not. Uh, I I I need to go on. Uh, for the organizer uh, organizing committee, I have to uh, go to until the end of my talk and then we uh, answer the, the things, uh, the question later on, right? Yes. Um, okay. Yeah. Thank you. So that is the um, like a surveillance system that we, we, can, we can apply uh, uh, to uh, detect or to uh, identify uh, the uh, pathogen that might cause the next uh, wave of the pandemic or like that. So uh, beside the uh, pathogen in animal, human, or the health problem, right? Here we talk, oh, sorry. Uh, we talk about problem here. Right, and uh, we talks about the uh, disease uh, emerging and pandemic, and some people touch on the uh, antimicrobial resistant, right, and something uh, 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 that around the pathogen, right. So and for right now, so if you would like to prepare yourself for the next wave of the pandemic, I think that we have to have the transdisciplinary research to get the new idea, a new piece of information for you to prepare yourself to, for the next web. For example, the area that you can do is the, you can take a look the driver. When we have the problem, some need to have the dry, dive, diving factor. For example, we have the land use, climate change, globalization, urbanization, migration, like that. So uh, deforestation, that those are something that we call driver. So we can do the research that, uh, why the land use? What exact types of the land use that can stimulate uh, the, uh, like uh, 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 the pandemics of the disease or uh, some factor. And when we know we can slow down or we can stop or prevent that one. And another one, now we know that we have the influence. Influence is mean that something that not uh, stimulate this one, but it gonna influence us. Uh, it might slow down or it might make our uh, intervention or some implementation smoothly or effectively, like a culture economy, behavior, educational background of the people. Uh, uh, this is the thing. Uh, or some people right now, when I join the global health security agenda, we talk about 
financing sustainability. The money is more important for the driving everything, right? So how we uh, estimate the cost uh, or cost effectiveness of the in, uh, implementation or the intervention, right? That and uh, this is the the area that uh, we can uh, do the. Uh, the research and to prepare ourselves for the next one. When I talk about the time disciplinary, time disciplinary research, how it looks like. So here, so it's, it doesn't mean that I ask you to transform yourself, right, to another discipline. For example, I am uh, in the health, human health uh, discipline. I When I work with people, to solve, to do the research. No need for me to transform myself to, to be a veterinarian, right? Or to be the educator, but how we do that? So uh, we know that the problem of the research, the problem had many angle or dimension or issue. So for the issue that, that really, and uh, to our discipline, so for the veterinarian, veterinarian can uh, do this part and public health expert can do this part. Epidemiology uh, uh, logist can do this part. Economy can do another part. So it's like a put, uh, what we call, uh, contribute to the issue that relate to our uh, discipline based expertise, right? There. So here I can say that when we do the Time disciplinary research. It's like uh, you think about put the right man on the right jobs, right? That uh, 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 it means that we uh, we allocate the expert, right? Uh, that uh, uh, have very uh, uh, high expertise on that issue, a particular issue of the problem, not the whole problem. So this is the research that uh, proposed to be uh, done to prepare the uh, researcher and the people to be ready, right? Uh, and the discipline, when I talk about the, uh, the, the expert, the disciplinary, uh, discipline-based expert, right? So there are several disciplines or the uh, uh, base uh, discipline here. Right. For example, in the human, maybe here in, in this list and animal. So you you have the people in this one. Environment, maybe engineering. The some we need the economist. We need the social side uh, to help us. So when we do the uh, research or even do we do the implementation intervention. So right now the method that might fit well with. Uh, uh, like uh, uh, disruptive world and uh, uh, like uh, when we have the uh, emerging pandemic, uh, emerging infectious disease pandemic is that we need to have the collaborative effort uh, of the multidisciplinary expert and work at different level, local level, national level, and you can work at your department of epidemiology and then at national level and global level and to uh, uh, like uh, to attend the optimal health of the people, animal and environment, right? So uh, this is the thing. So what gonna be the practice I talked about, but exactly practice in health that we uh, supposed to use to to be ready for the uh, like uh, next web of the uh, emer uh, pandemic, disease pandemic. So I would like to say that one thing, when you we start from here, the holistic thinking, right? Planning, integrating and implementing and as well as improvement through the perspective of the multi-sectoral, multi uh, multi sector and multi uh, discipline, right? Stakeholder, right? So uh, go to the detail. What they supposed to do together first, define and aware the problem that now the problem is 
not for a single person, a single sector anymore. We need to sit together. This problem is quite compl complicated, or we call wicked problem, like uh, uh, emerging of the uh, disease pandemic, we call wicked problem. And define who are the stakeholder who gonna get the benefit from this, who lost from this one and bring them all together and, and sit and discuss, right? And then define the what sector, what discipline that can enhance the thing that you're gonna do, right? Or complement to uh, what the thing that you're gonna do, right? And then collaborate and do the implementation. And then, so when we work together, we need to update or upgrade the ourselves, human, uh, like with the update capacity or the skill that are required for us to have high flexibility, adaptability to the new situation or new web of the outbreak. And then the most important one, right, we have to have the assessment or evaluation for the improvement. Lesson learned from the first implementation, first outbreak, gonna use for the improvement for the next one. If we did, we done for the implementation and we don't uh, get any lesson learned from that, maybe we will do that forever and we might uh, not uh, like uh, uh, adapt or we, we are not ready enough for the next one. We might lose and the virus, viral uh, uh, disease pandemic gonna win like that. So, so as I mentioned already a little bit that I talk about when we work together, not talk only about implementation, uh, about the system infrastructure platform, right? When we hear, we know that when we would like to do something, right? The human workforce is the most important one. So that the workforce development is the key for the pandemic prepare it and respond for us as the Thailand One Health University Network. And we know that when the people, it's not easy when I work in this one, we start 10 years ago and the people said, are we gonna use One Health for, are uh, we gonna bring the people, the expert from different discipline, from different sector, different now, it's different ministry, different country to work together. And the people said that it's not easy to bring the expert to sit together and get along very quick or to do some respond to the infectious disease that they never facing before, like effectively. So they have to have some skill in embed in their body. This skill we call core competency, right? For the student, right now you heard about 21st century that we have to prepare our student first. Creativity, innovation, if they don't know, how to decide the innovation intervention, no way that you can win with the next wave of the pandemic. Critical thinking, when they have to do the, the action, when they need to step back or they need to stop, or the problem solving, if they don't have this skill, system thinking, if they don't have, so no way to handle with the uh, complex uh, problem. Communication. Right, because we have to bring the people from different discipline, different uh, culture, right? Uh, in terms of the different uh, sector and country. So we have to have very uh, good and effective communication uh, strategy and platform. And also we think about how to collaborate effectively, how to coordinate amongst those also. Right, so we, the business sector, they don't talk about competency, but they talk about functional competency, right? You can see that collaboration, communication, also overlap with the, the thing, the competency of the student. Let's see for, I just, 
go to I always update myself with this one World Economic Forum that they always update skill that 21st century the skill that need for survival and of the people uh, in the disruptive world. They say that the workforce right now, if you would like to be effective and ready for the next wave, at least you have to have learning agility, right? Ability to and willing to learn and apply the knowledge to the unfamiliar situation, right? So this is a thing. And then we so when we call the apply the knowledge and skill to unfamiliar situation, the people, the Harvard business sector try to uh, define more. Said they say that okay, they have to have design innovation, they have to perform or implement. You did you think and you didn't do anything, so no way. And they have to have self reflection and risk taking. Also, they need to to analyze the situation. Uh, so which one is red, which one is go to the uh, red zone, which one is the blue oceans like that. And then you need to have ability to uh, like bond back when we knock down. So we call resilient, right? And another one is ground optimism. It means that normally the optimistic is good, try to balance is good, but sometimes it's not feasible. So this one, you, the workforce that can survive during the uh, next pandemic of the disease outbreak, oh, no, uh, next disease pandemic is the people that have the thinking way or the design or the intervention like uh, uh, to be optimistic and realistic and feasible to do. Right. So when we have that, when we know already the people are supposed to have this, this thing and how to do that, you, uh, you said that, okay, our students, our workforce have to have very good collaboration, but you didn't do anything. You didn't uh, like uh, do the human development, no way that they can improve because competency, uh, characteristic, it takes time to embrace, to behave, right? So in uh, like a, a network, Thailand One Health University Network. So we, we start from the university forum. So we gather the faculty who are expert in different field, and then we train them first, right? If you would like to train the student, would like to train the workforce about collaboration, how to do that. And first, you need to train yourself, behave first, and then we call them at the One Health Champion. And then we ask them to disseminate, propagate the idea by embedding the uh, idea, the competency into their teaching, their research, and their service. And for the workforce, current workforce, or the, uh, the uh, pro health professionals and health practitioners from the government, we ask them to do during the health practice or the routine works, right? That. So how we do that? Normally, you know that when we would like to prepare the human workforce that embed or equip with the competency that require for the outbreak response, right? So you need to train them, not lecture, not the video, not online course. You need to provide them the real experience, right? Uh, in the, the problem, like, uh, uh, so let them experience on identification of the uh, pathogen right, surveillance, prevention, and control and response, at least to feel bad learning. They have to do by themselves. They have to uh, experience by themselves. And right now, during the COVID-19 situation, we could not do that. I also told and also stuck with that for a while. And then we found that, okay, now we have some game, right? Normally we won't encourage our students to play a game 
but now we have to use this at the platform learning game based learning platform to provide the simulation for the student right to know about the disease transmission symptom and what are the factor that contribute or promote the uh, disease occurrence or the severity and so now we also have the uh, game that allows the people to decide the control current response this is the thing that we can use so uh, i'm not sure that um i share with the audio or not um, let let um let's try first i don't think to hear the voice See, uh, could you hear any voice from there? Nothing voice. Huh? Oh, nothing Again? voice. No the voice. One? Yeah, no voice. Okay. Sorry that uh, I think I forgot to, I need to stop first. Person. And yes. Don't have voice, right? Uh, okay, chair style. Uh, oh, sorry. Okay, now could you okay. hear, right? Okay. So the sample of game-based simulation for the Once, disease outbreak there were more than started. 7 billion people in the world. The human race ruled supreme. Its dominance taken for granted. <coughs> I find it hard to picture that world now. The plague was unlike anything we had ever encountered before. It came out of nowhere, spread it undetected. Its only symptom, a tiny cough. We think patient zero became infected in Africa, but we can't be sure. By the time we spotted it, 10% of the world was infected. Even then, we didn't take it very seriously. Uh, but everything changed when it mutated and people began to drop dead in the streets. It rapidly became the greatest threat that our species had ever faced. Governments united in an extraordinary effort to develop a cure, but it wasn't enough. Civilizations collapsed, the plague keeps killing. <coughs> now we live in a lab, isolated from those we try to save. Ethics and morals long gone. The cure is all that matters now. It evolves so damn fast, but we are close. We just, we just need more time. <laughs> okay, so that is an uh, examples of the game based learning that maybe for the uh, educator, Right. So when you would like to prepare the student or workforce to be ready for the next phase of the pandemic, you need to uh, provide them the experience, at least the, uh, we call the feedback learning. And as well as for the one that we can simulate, we can uh, uh, we cannot bring the student to the where we have the COVID-19. So it's quite high risk for them right because it's a light threatening so we will use this uh, game based or simulation and uh, let the student to uh, input the factor like animal human and environment and then they will know right and know uh, if they fell on that it's still okay in the game nothing perfect but so when they fell several times they will learn from that Let's learn from that, gonna be makes them 
like uh, more competent and be ready for the outbreak. And uh, if we don't have these things, the people, uh, the student or the workforce might have like uh, only the principle and they don't know uh, how to deal, how to do the problem solving like that. Okay, so for the, I back to academic institute, right? So when we have the COVID-19 outbreak, I call that they change our classroom a lot, right? Most of people say that, okay, why don't we deliver online, use Zoom, WebEx, or meeting platform, right? So then what happened with the meeting platform? As I mentioned already, if you would like to prepare the workforce to be ready for the next wave of the pandemic, the active learning and participatory learning much used, must be used. So the online is quite one way, one way, and the student could not uh, like uh, uh, have very uh, strong experience uh, on that. So at the academic institute or uh, educator, so have to apply one thing. You have to have adaptability, prompt adaptability to decide to transform the thing that you done before. Maybe 10 years ago already I did this. I told him also, I also have to change immediately to prepare our network, our member to be ready, right? Try to use several uh, IT application or to, to maximize the learning outcome of the student to allow them to, uh, like, uh, to achieve the competency that we expect, right? Using this, like this one, before that, we have the uh, mapping, we have participatory approach. How to do that? We use the game, we use the what we call semi interactive virtual classroom, like that. Not only Zoom, but this one is a what we call get to tell some platform, right? And the other people can use other platform also, but uh, it have to provide the semi interactive between the instructor and the uh, in educator and the learner. And besides planning, normally we do on site, we have the close interaction with that planning. So now we need to use this discussion platform, right? So when we, so let imagine that I talk about uh, workforce development, embrace them with the competency that require for uh, them to be, uh, to respond, to be ready for the next wave of the pandemic. So when we prepare the student, we call them at the future workforce. We keep doing that for the first year, second year until they graduate. They will come the chain agent. Yesterday, I gave a talk in the world's uh, antimicrobial resistance week, awareness week. So uh, they say that, okay, for us, we cannot stay like uh, forever, maybe 100 years that we can do, or maybe 10 years that we can uh, do the uh, like uh, educating and training for our students. How the idea, how the, the thing move forward. And then uh, maybe the pandemic maybe occur another 100 year. So we, uh, how we do that? So we, maybe I already passed away already, but we, if we prepare, we embed the idea and the competency to the student. And the student, we call them at the chain agent. And Thai, uh, we call them at One Hill Ambassador. Right, and then they will disseminate the idea, and they train. They do with other colleagues, friend like that. So this is how the uh, the thing that we prepare workforce for the next one. And I'm not sure. Maybe in during the discussion, we can share in Thailand, uh, the public health volunteer, uh, village health volunteer. Uh, we let health volunteer, sorry, uh, we let health volunteer are the backbones of the public health, uh, like the implementation uh, and intervention. They are the villagers who volunteer to, uh, to help 
the Ministry of Public Health or the public health uh, like a sector or healthcare to do some the uh, like a health education and implementation at uh, in their community, right? So the most important thing, if you have that for Thailand, we recognize that the first wave and second wave, uh, the contour of first wave and second wave of the COVID-19 in Thailand are due to the efforts of the village health volunteer. And this effort has been recognized and also uh, like uh, by the by the World Health Organization when they review our uh, like uh, action right that or respond to the COVID, they said that the success the one of the key success uh, the factor in the success uh, of in the control of the COVID nineteen of Thailand is the village health volunteer. So we have to empowerment those backbone of the public health and then they will help us to do to uh, they also uh, will help us to surveillance and identify the abnormal health issue at their community and they can uh, help us to quarantine someone else and then uh, by this the disease might occur at we call a foresight cannot develop at the outbreak of pandemic anymore. So, but as I mentioned, the village health volunteer are villager. So we have to embed them, provide them, educate them with the proper level of knowledge and skill, and then make them ready with uh, to respond to and uh, for the next step together with us, right? So it depends on you, your country, what are the backbones of the public health? So don't forget to empowerment, to empower them, to strengthen their capacity, do the workforce development with them, right? So, and as I mentioned, the one health approach, right? We need the collaboration among sector, amongst the discipline. So, how the people collaborate. Uh, I mean, the from different sector collaborate, or organization collaborate together, right? So for Tohun, we collaborate amongst university member and faculty member. And we also collaborate with the Thai, the government, right? So, uh, and also the funder. And here is the partner, right? So here, let's imagine that uh, Tohun is here. It is academic uh, network. And Thailand, we have Thai One Health Network, comprising Tohun and other uh, like uh, ministry here. Many uh, seven ministry plus Red Cross Society at the member. And Tohun, we uh, at the member, we link with the Thai one Health Network through One Health Coordinating Unit of the Thai of this network. And also not only the breaching and also the structure that allow us to bring Thailand, we have the uh, MOU on the One Health implementation or uh, implementation of One Health Initiative for National Health Security. So this is uh, MOU is under global health security agenda like that. And you can see here, uh, there are seven uh, ministry that uh, including Ministry of Interior, right? Ministry of Education and Thai Red Cross Society side the MOU together. And for Tohun, right? When under the, at that time, under the Ministry of Education, we also, uh, have very good opportunity that uh, the uh, the Thai One Health Network uh, they appoint uh, uh, the chairman Sotohun to serve as a member of National EID Board. That is the very big board uh, to take care about the policy on the how we 
prepare for the e, uh, EID in Thailand, how to respond for that. And Tohun coordinator Ni also has been appointed as the working committee for the One Health Coordinating Unit. And also appoint because of we works. Uh, we are in the academic still. I also has been appointed as deputy chair for the committee uh, on the strategic planning and preparedness and prevention and control of EAD in academic still. So by this, what we call license, I call license, can make Tohun works more and contribute more, uh, uh, like uh, in terms of the work, current workforce development, how to develop how to decide the competency for the uh, health professional who work who's, who work in the governmental sector right that and how to assist them to train uh, their workforce so the role of thailand uh, tohun is here right to assist the government and health sector to develop innovative training educating platform to prepare the future workforce with and equip them with one health knowledge skill that make them ready for the effective prevention, control, and respond to the uh, outbreak uh, and uh, um, disease uh, pandemics, right? That and also we have to strengthen the one health capacity of the current workforce or health professional who work uh, in the governmental sector for effective a better prevention, detection, control, and response, uh, as well as the AMR, improved AMR. So as you can see here, in Thailand, Tohun is responsible for the workforce development, right? So uh, under the MOU and the contribution and license that I mentioned uh, from the uh, uh, One Health MOU, so uh, it allows Tohun to have the many of high level meeting and engagement with uh, author ministry, right? So this is the picture from the recent One Health, uh, Global One Health Day, right? They uh, asked um, me to share how to prepare the workforce to be uh, ready for the, like a, a health sustainability, right? That. So, and, Tohun, we uh, when we collaborate with the uh, uh, governmental sector, seven or uh, seven ministry plus Red Cross Society, we don't think that enough. So let's give I give you the example when we work on the uh, raising the uh, MR awareness and prevention of the MR in human animal. Tohun have to work with the government right to ensure that uh, to comply with the policy right, to do something to support the national policy on the MR and strategy MR. Now we move forward to work with, collaborate with the uh, private sector, start from Pfizer Thailand, that to get the uh, innovation R&D based, uh, uh, like a intervention or a novel knowledge. And then, so uh, we also, now we also work with the community, especially for the village health volunteer, uh, how to uh, advocate them, how to get the, uh, what we call commitment and part, part is, uh, like a contribution from them in the health uh, implementation and action. Right, that. So here, it just show you that not only the uh, collaborations amongst the governmental sector, academic sector, but also the international organization like uh, uh, FAO, OIE, right, that, and private sector, right, to do on the thing that be quite strong. For example, here we have been recognized as a workforce development. And another thing also, when we have, as I mentioned, when we are facing with challenge COVID-19, we also have the chance to develop or improve the thing that we done, we, we implement 
uh, we also have the chance to decide intervention. Uh, so with the support of USAID, so they launched the project called Transform or COVID-19 project by right? that. And they already give us the area that we, they thought that we supposed to work with diagnostic testing, development of diagnostic testing and surveillance, infection prevention and control or IPC and risk communication to protect the public. And at that time, I give you the example that uh, for the surveillance, right, some of our members think about how to do the surveillance virus, virus surveillance in the environmental uh, environments of the hospital. Right and and then come up with the how to uh, to prevent that to uh, and if not how to ensure that the uh, what we call the system of the hospital safe enough don't release any virus uh, to the environment right that and uh, next so we have the chance to decide when we have the COVID nineteen it need uh, very uh, what we call the safe and uh, quick uh, detecting or screening of the uh, infect infected case, right? So the ones of our uh, members, so uh, they develop the what we call contactless car service for the COVID. Uh, 19 detection and develop the web-based application for the patient recruitment and the uh, case management and also the reporting result uh, of the, uh, the testing to the patients. And from that, right, so uh, within a few months, they can, uh, there are about so one 1,700 uh, people that received the uh, service on the COVID-19 testing, right? That. And then we have the chart also. This just give you the example of the small network. Uh, uh, um, we think about uh, how to uh, decide the innovative IPC uh, prototype. Like, like uh, people come up with the 10 prototype. In fact, we have 10 prototype. The example is one is a helmet. Normally, you know that we have to wear the face shield and then, uh, and then the mask, how to do that, right? During the COVID-19, right? And then uh, they also talks about how to decide the, the, the bin or the trust we call Tohun Smart Trust to for the disinfection or uh, destroy uh, the uh, the mask right that and also we need to think about how to do more effective uh, risk communication to the uh, public general public and also for the decision uh, maker right so this is uh, the thing they call informed risk detection and decision making tool right that so uh, this is a and the the one that in the area of the health advocacy of and risk communication for the general public during the COVID-19, right? So we we have to use the what we call the uh, design one uh, activity we call one health in the virtual park for the risk communication uh, to talk about the health issue that are uh, interest of the pub, general public at the time, or maybe the issue that quite have the conflict uh, amongst the general public. And then we try to address that problem in a positive way. It means that give them the fact both advantage or disadvantage and uh, let, uh, so this uh, we call one way of the health advocacy and risk communication, right? And we found that it's quite success. Uh, one issue that we did uh, months ago, we call, uh, we, we, uh, we organized the one health in the park in the issue of uh, the uh, mRNA vaccines, vaccine, vaccination in uh, children, good, dangerous, how to, uh, uh, it's good to to have or not, right? That so this uh, is a tone in the collaboration with the uh, National Institute of 
uh, vaccine, uh, National Vaccine Institute. So, and with the Pfizer Thailand, right? So, uh, so we try to uh, get uh, more uh, children uh, because uh, we know that uh, when we uh, have the campaign, we ask the people to have the vaccine and some of them rejects. And this is even is try to uh, gather more the people uh, like uh, to have the vaccine. And this uh, also is one of the success story of the uh, Tohun effort of Tohun to help the governmental and health sector. So, and this is uh, the event that broadcast in the one uh, television channels of Thailand. So those things that the small effort of Tohun to show you that when we have, uh, we facing with the challenge, uh, like COVID-19 pandemic, so we can decide or improve the thing that we think that is not good enough, like intervention. And let's see, I talked about the collaboration, One Health collaboration amongst the multidisciplinary expert and sector. So let's see that what, what we have right now at the global level. The global level also have the frameworks and the standards. Right. So for the people who work in the uh, public health, you know that standard for the public health that launched by the WHO, regulated uh, by the WHO is the uh, uh, international health regulation. And uh, for the veterinarian, uh, so we call PVS uh, like that. So that are the standard that we have to comply and align, right? And normally, Right. Uh, in the previous time, we know that most standards are not passed to or uh, execute or to be the uh, integrate with something that we really implement. It's on the shelf somewhere. People always say that standards are on the shelf. Right. So uh, right now we have uh, the forum, the global forum called Global Health Security Agenda. Right for the global health security agenda. So I will talk about the platform later on. They focus on three things: risk. Right. They said that they always ask the a country member to identify what are the risks. Update every year: emerging infectious disease, drug resistant, intentional creation of biotourism. Right. That's gonna be the life threatening agent like that. And also ask when you're facing with this list, how, what are the opportunity or the intervention that you will do? You have uh, ability, you have a chance to have the multi-sectoral coordination collaboration uh, amongst country also, uh, between country also, and you have the chance to develop a new technology, science, and intervention. And you have to do the research, transdisciplinary research, targeting to the animal and uh, human environment interface. And also this one, uh, uh, Global Health uh, Security Agenda said that uh, if you would like to be safe, to be ready for the next pandemic, you have to prioritize the thing. We cannot do everything, right? So we have our living thing, we have our uh, routine work, and the priority is we have to prevent, how to prevent the emergent at the sort, at the origins of the infectious disease pandemic. And then what the strategy can to do the rapid detection. And then once we detect and once the outbreak happen, how to respond effectively. That are three priorities that Global Health Security Agenda mentioned. So what is the Global Health Security Agenda? So it's a platform, global, global partnership to accelerate achievement of the IHR and uh, PBS, right? And so, for the GSA is to provide the global partnership. Right now, there are 113 countries at the member throughout the world. 
right? And then for the One Health approach is the operational approach, strategic approach to uh, to make the uh, the sector or the country that collaborate collab uh, uh, collaborate uh, in the network uh, to have very good uh, to prevent, detect, and respond to emerging uh, threat effectively like that. And we combine GSSA, the partnership with the, start, uh, the approach, we will get global framework and real global action combined together, right? So, and here is uh, something that if uh, you never heard about the SSA before, ISR before, for the public health, you can go to the WHO, right? Right now they have choice assessment, JEE, uh, like that. So how to evaluate, how to mix the uh, like uh, public health sector or professionals or health, uh, health sector uh, are ready for the uh, next pandemic. Right, this is the thing that uh, so what they uh, would like, uh, I mean, the, the, the things that uh, they decide, uh, this form the consensus and brainstorming of uh, uh, the, the expert uh, to, uh, throughout the world, right, that we call GSA action package, right, they talk about how to minimize the spillover. National biosecurity, biosafety system, national vaccine, laboratory system, indicator of the evidence-based surveillance system. Uh, this is reporting uh, with the F, uh, FAO, WHO, OEE requirement, workforce development, right? And emergency operation center or EOC, rapid and uh, multi-sectoral uh, response and how to do manage. Right now, I think that from the last, uh, the recent meeting with the GSSA, uh, so they're at the point of entry and the financial uh, sustainability at the, another action packet and task force like that. So this is a thing that the global platform prepare us to be ready for the next pandemic of the, this infectious disease. I just would like to show you now uh, the things that, because you asked me to talk about prepare it for the next wave of the pandemic, this is pandemic. So the WHO learned one thing, interim guidelines, uh, guidance for local authority, uh, like strengthening the preparedness for the COVID-19 in the city and urban system, uh, setting. Why the city or urban setting? Because uh, the WHO gave the reason that because it can, uh, there are variety of the thing, right? And the complexity of the infrastructure and socio-economic uh, a uh, factor, and also it can uh, provide the uh, the what they call the uh, uh, can serve at the uh, is is also high risk to to create the disease for sign and the sort for the uh, disease outbreak, right? That and to to prepare for uh, the outbreak the next uh, outbreak. So maybe you can learn from the one that they give the guidance for the how to manage with the COVID-19, right? There are several, uh, we, uh, the WOO said that we have to have planning first, right? And they have several uh, things concerned that you, uh, the health sector or the people who work in the uh, public health system or health system, uh, at that uh, city or the, uh, to think that uh, what is the existing uh, coordination uh, system, right? Uh, you can say, you can see here that normally when I talk about GSSA and here the WHO, they try to emphasize the multi-sectoral coordination and collaboration, which is a key that will allow us to be safe and survive 
and also ready for the next wave of the disease pandemic. So we have to take a look many things, right? What, what is the group population, vulnerable uh, population? What are the uh, like uh, uh, status of the existing facility and capacity? How uh, to uh, balance between the uh, e epidemiology uh, benefit and uh, uh, like uh, socio uh, economy uh, impact, negative impact, right? That. Uh, and then WHO also said that how to mix uh, when we, the disease happened, if it happened, this case is COVID-19, how to, to prepare the city for the effective response. First, coordination again, Coordinate with the local plan. What is existing plan of that city? Not generate a new thing because the city or the community or your country know very well with one, with plan work well with you, right? And use that and, and coordinate, uh, use that plan. But plus coordination among the sector in your city or your country and then do the risk and crisis communication properly, right? And decide and to approach uh, like a very uh, like appropriate, uh, like a public health measure, for example, uh, physical distancing, uh, some uh, hygiene, hand hygiene, uh, respiratory uh, adequate, right? That or uh, to in, uh, ensure the accessibility to the healthcare service, right? That so this is the the guidance from the WHO how to respond to the uh, disease pandemic uh, effectively. So I would like I think that this thing may be uh, not new for you. Right, we know that the public health measure or the protective measure are here, right? So normally when we have the disease uh, case, right? So without, right, uh, we will have a more number of the case here. And when the, uh, we also, every country, right? Every uh, community have limited a uh, healthcare system capacity in terms of the resource infrastructure, hospital, uh, like that. And then if it beyond, uh, the case are beyond, the capacity will cause the problem, right? So how to flatten, how to reduce the case, right? Uh, the people uh, propose that we have to have the protective measure, public health measure. Most of the uh, measure, so we a strategy we call uh, one is a containment strategy to prevent the community transmission, and another one mitigation strategy. Normally, uh, this one is uh, what we uh, every country had done uh, it's here. It's what we call non pharmaceutical intervention, right? Uh, social distancing, uh, school lockdown, city lockdown, country lockdown, uh, travel restriction, and for the continent, right? So it need to coordinate uh, between the like uh, response amongst the governmental sector, uh, massive testing or uh, surveillance. Prompt contact tracing and quarantine is quite uh, what we call a uh, robot and uh, cost uh, costly. So it's also difficult to do, right? Uh, so normally we use this one. And then uh, the uh, social distancing also, uh, most of the people said about social distancing, why we have to keep maintain social distancing. So there, there is the reason that before that if the if people uh, comply with the social distancing 90%, right? So they can, we can flatten the curve and reduce the spreading of coronavirus like that. Uh, it depends on the level of compliance, right? That. So that's why uh, most of country recommend that social distancing, uh, hand watching like that. And recently I just joined and I uh, had a chance to uh, listen to uh, 
uh, talk, special talk in the GTSA uh, steering committee meeting by the CEO. This is a friend uh, of the resort. I think that is a project resolved to save life. And, and he also uh, uh, first order to publish what you call now, if we would like to uh, have effective detection and response for the next wave of the disease pandemic, they propose to use 717 principle. So it means that you, when we have, when we have something happen, like abnormal in health uh, or emergency, uh, we have to detect uh, within seven days. Seven day detection to detect a suspect infection disease outbreak, right? And another day uh, to notify within, notify to the health, public health authority to start the in, investigation within one day and another seven day to spend for the response effective response. And to do that, they also have the core competence to make the thing uh, within a seven day of the detection, one day of the notification and seven day of effective response. For example, in seven day, right, the, uh, the people that involved in the early detection and response have to access to the medical care and treatment. Health worker, need to train on case definition and ability to detect suspect outbreak like that. And the laboratory capacity need to be ready for the differential so diagnosis. And then for uh, the, uh, the component that required for one day notification to the public health authority is clear reporting system or structure, data system training for the report thing uh, of the uh, from the laboratory facility right so and the public health worker need to receive the uh, notification or alert uh, for the uh, investigation and response and for the response I think that uh, for you we and we might uh, involve or contribute more in this one another seven day right response initiation. Epidemiology, uh, epidemiological investigation, laboratory confirmation, medical treatment, counterpart measure, communication and community engagement, and response coordination. So this is the new principle, what we call organizing uh, principle that proposed for the early detection and effective response for the next wave of the pandemic. And then I would like to go back to the interim guidance for the, from the BHO again, right? I could not, for myself, I'm small to say that how to prepare ourselves to be ready for the future pandemic. So the BHO said that if you would like to prepare yourself to be ready for the future emergency or a public health emergency or disease pandemic. So you remember that keep consideration which means that you need to have situation analysis about your structure infrastructure capacity uh, the country capacity uh, in 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 term of the uh, surveillance response uh, control of the disease and then carefully balance between the socio-economic benefit and epidemiology risk assessment such a penalty sustainability of the uh, an impact of the, the thing that intervention like a public health measure like that. And then any action that had been done with the COVID-19, maybe now we need to start to make it, uh, transform it to be sustainability, sustainable capacity, develop it for uh, the next uh, uh, adapt those plan, transform that plan or action to be to fit uh, to feasible for the future health emergency. It, it has to be flexible enough, right? And not rigid only the COVID-19. And the WSOs uh, recommend that fund must be allocated for the longer term action 
right? Those slots are the term should be incorporated or integrated into the plan or, or the health system of each country, right? And when you implement something, it should document. Let's learn and share and adapt during the COVID-19 experience and collect that one uh, for the uh, like uh, advocation or for the uh, fight, uh, what we call to, uh, at the lesson learn uh, uh, for the financing and certain uh, for financing or the policy maker. And one of the most important that WHO address is conduct a formal AAR or after action review to ensure that the progress, what are going to be the strong or weakness uh, for the uh, last COVID-19 pandemic. And then, uh, like, uh, uh, then uh, if it's uh, good enough for the wider health system, or uh, uh, then you will take a look and make it more better uh, prepare them for better preparedness for the next uh, event, uh, like a word scenario, like if we have uh, COVID-20 or 20X or uh, pandemic of disease X, right? That. So uh, those is the recommendation from the WHO and global platform. Uh, and then, so we would like to say also that uh, about now, because the most of the uh, disease uh, pandemic that occur right now are uh, novel, like a COVID-19 is novel one, right? Maybe we, we might have the uh, next wave of uh, disease egg pandemic. So we don't know. So how we know beforehand? We have to have the zoonotic risk prediction or disease uh, prediction, uh, prediction technology. And this is, uh, I gather from uh, one uh, publication that they say that how to do that, right? So we need to have the system to predict a potential uh, trait or agent first. Uh, using Normally they use the metagenomics data or uh, next generation sequencing and then analyze and interpret and they will get some potentials, uh, pathogen or trait that can cause that one. And then the information from the reservoir or the pathogen we can use uh, to for the design, the R&D, vaccine and therapy, and also analyze for the eco, eco uh, and design for the ecological solution to reduce the spillover, even though where it's come from anymore, uh, how it's transmitted to the uh, human, or uh, it's like a reverse zoonosis, zoonotic or not, a zoonosis or not. So we can uh, decide the intervention to reduce those spillover. And also to prevent, uh, also to decide the intervention or the method to prevent the future outbreak. Right. So, and the people also said that it seemed to be easy, but some many uh, when we have the uh, decide some intervention, every every intervention is not one hundred percent perfect. It have pitfall and barrier, like uh, maybe the uh, because it's new, right? Uh, virus is new, and also have the mutation all the time. Uh, we might have not enough fundamentals or knowledge or data, and maybe the uh, governance and management of the uh, the system may be challenged, right? And uh, uh, some uh, data may be not shared uh, openly, maybe uh, restricts to a group, right? We call private private site sign. Uh, like a uh, result, right? That so, and also the limitation of the data sharing, also. And how to do that? I think that some organization already start to do the risk prediction using the technology, uh, like uh, uh, they call the 
um, meta genomic analysis and big data analysis like that. And start maybe uh, uh, by the USAID project called PREDICT, right? PREDICT starts uh, in the year 2012, right? And then right now, we also have another project that uh, MERT and uh, upscale from the PD, they call global viral, right? And the global viral have the goal to detect, identify the uh, zoonotic viral trait that might have the potency to cause the outbreak, right? That and collectorize the geographical score, host a uh, virus and and evolution, transmission, host, like that, and identify the behavior, practice, or the factor that uh, might be um, uh, contribute to the spillover, like that, and try to design the, and then use for the de design of the, uh, uh, some strategy to do the uh, risk mitigation like that. And also this one will uh, allow us to have a global surveillance network also because a uh, global virome don't have the money for uh, each lab or each one, but they they uh, use their uh, own, uh, the money, the, the investment from their own pocket and then share the uh, data, right? Uh, so there were, create like a global surveillance network of the bat, the virus that uh, 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 found in bat in the, uh, what we call water bird, right? That right now the people know that the water bird uh, um, is the uh, key sort that contain uh, high, high diversity of the virus that might have the potency to cause the next uh, disease uh, outbreak or pandemic like that. And also uh, this platform will help us to improve the high risk virus watch risk. So in Thailand also PDIC always update with the list of the news uh, uh, virus that they detect from the bat or the animal reservoir like that. And then the one health coordinating unit committee have to be endorsed. Um, and another one that gonna be the platform that uh, might be used, uh, sustainable platform that used for uh, not only the uh, network, but also the health sector and country to uh, to do like uh, the holistic, um, the, the whole system of the uh, identified uh, uh, health problem uh, I mean, the uh, what supposed to be uh, the disease uh, that uh, gonna uh, emerge or happen in the in the future. Identify the stakeholder and then identify how they work together, right? Uh, and then analyze the system in terms of the internal capacity, external capacity, strength and weakness like that, and develop plan for them to uh, prepare themselves, right? In terms of the surveillance, uh, prevention control of the, uh, the health problem that it takes. So this is, I give you the example, uh, one system that we can use that we call One Health uh, OS Smart, Right, the, the platform will allow us to do this six step and come up with the one is the action communication pathway and the stakeholder that involved for each step. This one, we use OS Smart to decide the stakeholder and the uh, like a, a, a line of the communication and coordination. Um, for the to respond to the rabies, right? And also show the uh, multi-sectoral coordination for the rabies response of the uh, Thai ministry, right? So this is the example of Thailand. And I also, and this is uh, the example that how they uh, come up with the stakeholder map. Right. When we know the stakeholder map, so uh, we by the system also we can identify the role and uh, of each 
one. So when the disease, then the pandemic happened, no one does. What should I do? Right? They have to act immediately. Right? And when they have to communicate by the system, by the full chart, that uh, they can communicate, and the line of command and coordination also clear where and when and how to do, right? So those platform also adopt by some uh, like a health department. Here is I saw from the uh, publication that Arizona Department of Health Service also used this one to identify the communication and collaboration, multi collaboration to respond to the rabies and many zoonotic diseases, right? That is just give you the example or maybe as tone. And when we have that, right, not only the, the plan for to identify the system that involved uh, with the prevention control and respond and prepare it of the people to be ready for uh, uh, occurring of a disease. And when we have that, we have to have simulation. Let us familiar practice with that also try to simulate try to try out the thing that we draw right we have the simulation for the rabies response according to the plan above and then uh, in Thailand we gather the representative and health authority from uh, aid organization of the government and develop the operational plan for rabies response right so those are the the people, uh, the sector that involved in this uh, multi-sectoral coordination and communication for the rabies outbreak. And those ones, right, I just give you that. Uh, so in operation, they have, uh, I know that the people that work on the response, uh, simulation and tabletop side and understand very well that they have uh, several uh, like operating group or cluster that they have to do during the uh, outbreak response. And I just would like to uh, emphasize that when we develop the plan, normally we think about only for labor, we think about only the labor, what we're supposed to do, right? But now with the COVID-19, lesson learned for COVID-19, Thai ministry also think that what happened if we have baby together with the COVID-19 pandemic. So we have to have the backup plan for this. So this is a make us to be ready to prepare ourselves for the next one. Even we have the pandemic of the novel disease itself, plus the uh, outbreak or the disease, uh, the, the occurrence of the, uh, what we call the, uh, the local uh, uh, disease, right? Uh, so this is a thing that supposed to uh, happen. And uh, the thing that I think I try to get them as many as I can that uh, how to uh, prepare uh, for the next wave of the uh, disease pandemic. That, that all for the, my talks. The last one, you can see that if we would like in terms of the operation, right? If you would like to, to be ready for the next one. One, we need to, uh, we thought that, okay, we have to have the collaboration now, solution for the to to uh, respond and to uh, control the outbreak is we have to have uh, many of the experts to collaborate together, right? To have the collab collaborative effort among sort and among sector. So how to make that? We need to start from small thing, transform and integrate uh, the, the idea, bring the people more in a, a small project first. And those projects, how to do that you need to be optimistic and realistic not just oh idea is like this when you listen to me you may say that oh it seems to be perfect but no we learn uh, like a 10 years already right and we have to be try out earlier and improve right and start from small thing and then integrate into practice of your teaching research service and implementation 
health intervention. So when you do like this, when people do and more people do, you can prepare the whole country, the whole society, the world for the next uh, pandemic of the disease. That that all of the things that I would like. I think that I finished 30 minutes before time, right? Okay, thank you, Professor Monsoon. Uh, very good presentation. Congratulations. Yeah. Uh, uh, this is a very complete, so far, 79 slides, clear, neat, and informative presentations. Yeah. Can open our view to the handling to the COVID 19 pandemic snack. Yeah. Congratulations again on uh, your very good presentation. Allow me to convey the important point in the speaker presentation before discussion session. Yeah. Now is uh, you spend only uh, one hour and forty five minutes, so we have uh, uh, many uh, much time to uh, discussion. Yeah. Uh, so uh, allow me to. Read the important point of your presentation. This one first is uh, how powerful the COVID 19 pandemic throughout the history of infection disease pandemic in the world. Jadi, uh, Professor Mon Monsum telah menunjukkan bahwa uh, COVID 19 itu luar biasa pengaruhnya sepanjang sejarah uh, outbreak, ya, yeah, or pandemic, uh, penyakit menular, ya, yeah, terutama yang disebabkan oleh virus, ya. Yeah. Uh, Professor Monsum also introduced the One Health Counseling, uh, counseling which collaborates in integration between human and animal and the environment. So, view the problem as a unified whole system that requires health expert dealing with the humans, animal, and the environment to work together to solve health problem from planning to intervention and evaluation or multi-sectoral effort collaboration. Jadi yang penting adalah uh, pendekatan sekarang adalah uh, One Health di mana tidak bersektor tetapi bersatu dalam satu kesatuan untuk memecahkan masalah kesehatan. Next slide. One Health approach is um, include uh, human. Ya, yeah. ini memerlukan uh, need uh, expert in nutrition. Human medicine, social science, humanity, and also need the animal expert in veterinary medicine, biology, as well as uh, ecology. In uh, need also environmental expert, uh, expert in earth science and engineering. Next slide. The importance of conducting a holistic. Uh, surveillance which involves disease host, yeah, human and animal, environment and pathogen, using advanced communication technology, yeah, device and internet based, yeah. Jadi uh, sekarang surveillance itu berbeda karena semua kemajuan teknologi informasi termasuk device, ya, yeah, handphone, medsos segala itu dikerahkan, ya, yeah, untuk tersambung menjadi satu, ya. Yeah. Bayangkan uh, data tentang kesehatan hewan, kondisi hewan, lingkungan dan manusia itu disatukan ya oleh teknologi sehingga uh, lebih efisien dan efektif untuk mengambil keputusannya. Need transdisciplinary transdisciplinary research need the right mind in the right job ya. Need a new normal with a, a problem on human health, environmental health, animal health ya. Remember about the frozen food, yeah, as the transmission of COVID-19 interaction human and mental and animal health, yeah. Next slide. Workforce development is key for pandemic preparedness and response, yeah, karena uh, because the transmission uh, COVID-19 is uh, sangat rentan di tempat kerja, ya, di tempat kerja ini di mana orang berkerumun, ya. Yeah, dan teratur ya kali ada ini harus di uh, intervensi dengan baiknya. Core competency of One Health is a six foundational literacy, 
for competency and six character quality. Jadi yang ini mengambil uh, one hell ya. Ini harus menguasai tiga kompetensi ini. Next slide. Three technical area to respond COVID-19 is include diagnostic testing and surveillance, infection prevention and control, and risk communication to protect public health. Jadi semua ini tiga hal ini teknik yang harus dicari kelemahannya dan diperbaiki ya. Mana terutama di negara kita apa masalah dalam diagnosis setting dan surveillance, bagaimanakah uh, infection prevention dan control and bagaimana risk communication untuk melindungi public health. Next slide. Penting adanya ini yang penting ini bahwa penyakit nular seperti virus itu cepat sekali ya, maka harus melakukan 717 ya, global goal for early detection and response. Jadi harus cepat ya, tidak hanya 212 ya, tapi 717 global goal ya, 7 hari ya, harus bisa mendeteksi, satu hari harus bisa mengumumkan, 7 hari sudah harus respon ya, jadi ini harus cepat-cepatan. Ini yang mungkin kita harus perbaiki ya di Indonesia ini pentingnya. Next slide. Nah, ini beberapa langkah-langkah ya untuk strengthening preparedness ya lengkap ya apa yang harus dilakukan, cek satu-satu diperbaiki bagaimana ya sesuai dengan resources kita ya. Uh, next slide. Now we are enter to the discussion session. Uh, the presentation is very interesting. So, uh, it's many questions have been collected. Yeah, please the committee read out the question one by one, and then uh, Professor uh, Munsum also uh, answer the question one by one, and then follow with the uh, if have a still a time. Uh, uh, persecution can asking directly yeah? uh, through the Zoom or through the Zoom. Thank you. Please, uh, committee, uh, read the question. Yeah? Okay, um, thank you for the speech. Um... Professor Sangdun. Here we have so many questions. Um, our participants are very enthusiastic um, about this topic. So we have uh, honorable questions from our professor, Professor Suharyo Hadisaputra. Professor Suharyo Hadisaputra would like to know, what do you think about predictions of the third wave pandemic um, in Thailand? And how about in Indonesia, um, based on the data this month? Thank you very much. Uh, first, I can answer in the term of Thailand first, right? So uh, when we track, we, we, we have uh, what we call the COVID-19 center in Thailand and have report every day update on the uh, infected care, dead care, and the people that recover from the uh, COVID-19, right, and go back home, right, that uh, we uh, see that uh, from compared to last month, so it's dropped, it's dropped, uh, like uh, uh, from the, some close to 20,000 cases dropped to uh, seven or six, thousand case so it seemed to be better but uh, uh, asked about third wave I also wondering about that and when I visit I joined the global health security agenda we have the chance to talk with the director of the uh, communicable disease uh, control department and ask him how's about he said that uh, right now Thailand it seems to have better and we thought that we, we can control that but let's see after because we just uh, passed the uh, like an event we call 
like festival and uh, most of the people are gathered there and let's see uh, by this week or two weeks if we don't have uh, any cluster right so it's uh it seemed like uh, we we uh, we won't uh we we might not have the third and i don't I don't want to, we, our country don't want to have the third wave also, right? But I'm apologize for the Indonesia uh, uh, data that uh, I am I'm not sure that I can talk about or not. But for me, uh, uh, for when you keep talking about the, the case that report, right? And uh, if that result, is quite close to the real number. And if the drop significantly, and uh, maybe from your side, you are on the side. If you like a Thailand, I see that even the people uh, went out for Loi Katong festival, everyone wearing masks, wearing masks all the time and quite, quite scared, right? Uh, even my friend, uh, we drive together we have to put the mat on all the time. If you have uh, wearing the mask all the time and keep some uh, social distancing. So I think that is uh, quite uh, like safe, like, but no one know. But if we have very continuing uh, uh, practice and effort like it, I think that we won't uh, reach the third wave of the pandemic. Yeah. Okay, um, thank you for the answer. I think um, the international tourism border in Thailand is already open uh, last October. Is it true? Uh, is the border information is handicapped to tax conversion sector to manage uh, information about handicapped. Okay. Oh, it's a done still. Yeah. Okay, this is uh, the second question. Um, we yep. have from Stikas Pantirati, uh, uh, Bapak Ignatius Gungo. Um, dear Dr. Sangdun, uh, may I have information about um, the, handi uh, the handicap, maybe not the handicap, but the obstacle, the obstacle to take collaborations? Um, enter sector. In oh, um, the biggest obstacle in Thailand to manage COVID. Thanks a lot of your thanks a lot of your information. Okay. The biggest obstacle in managing COVID in Thailand. So the uh, the challenge, the challenge uh, for the management of the COVID nineteen in Thailand, right? Uh, in terms of how to gather the multi sector uh, and discipline. Uh, to to manage this, I think that one thing is uh, we uh, Thai. What I heard from my boss, <laughs> Professor Patap, he's a pneumologist, right? And he as a part of the national board to to foresee and to uh, to manage the this one, right? Uh, so he said that Thailand had formed the multidisciplinary board uh, one month uh, before the COVID-19 um, case uh, start in Thailand. So when we heard about Wuhan and the PDIC has some result back to the government and then they start to prepare for that already. So I think that that uh, we uh, for gathering the people at the policy level, we don't have the problem about that. But the challenge about the uh, multi-sectoral coordination is coordination mechanism. Coordination mechanism, how to make it effectively. And uh, as you know that we are academic uh, site, right? So and the people that manage have the authority to manage the disease is public health authority. So, so we we have to have very fine, uh, uh, very very clear support. Right? Sometimes uh, academic would like to do more, but we could not. 
because we don't have authority. That is maybe the another challenge. Uh, the challenge that we have is not about the multi-sectoral uh, collaboration, but about the maybe a, a, a weakness or the challenge, how to do the communication, risk communication with the people. When we have very, uh, what we call uh, high social network and the people receive the information and how to utilize how to evaluate, uh, how to uh, screen those is quite uh, difficult. And uh, what is the effective uh, risk communication when the people thought like this? That is, I think that is a challenge during the COVID-19 pandemic and the people are scared, right? Panic. When the people panic, we cannot say that you cannot panic like that. And when the people panic, maybe it need more effort of the public health uh, staff and authority to communicate with them, to come, uh, to make them come down and uh, give them the information and how to beat with the information that not what we call uh, untrust from untrust source Right. So how to skin it out, right? That, that is a challenge for the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, management, sorry. Okay. Um, so, okay. So for the second question, so we have coordinations and then um, body of authority and then the information selections to the citizens. Okay. Okay. And then we step to the Third questions from Ibu Tuti Inaya. We have two questions here. The first, um, is it is is lockdown still effective to prevent the third wave? And then second questions, how about um, the management of data surveillance in Thailand? Excuse me, you can unmute. Um, excuse me, Professor. Yeah. Okay. Could you show the, the question again uh, on the screen again? Could, could you please show the, the question yeah. again? Yeah. Lockdowns. Uh, so, first, is lockdown still effective? Uh, okay. It's a, a certain level of the effective, right? Uh, so why I say that? Uh, we still believe that if we have uh, the uh, lockdown uh, together with the travel restriction, right? So it's gonna uh, make the uh, reduce the uh, clustering or the uh, distribution of the the disease, right? And also uh, for the age of the case management and quarantine, right? That uh, why I say that a certain level of the success and or the because uh, when we have lockdown, it's good the principle. But how to ensure that the people uh, comply with the lockdown? And when the people we have we have another economic thing, economy. The people have to earn the money. They have to, to do something for their living, right? How to how we balance between economic uh, effect and the country lockdown. Sometimes we could not do 100% lockdown. And we have loosened some policy. So, and that's why the country lockdown uh, had a certain level to prevent the third wave of the COVID-19, but it depends on the practice of the people, if they really comply with that or not, right? But, but in Thailand still, I think that is still work well, right? And another one is for- Data surveillance, the second question. Surveillance, data, yeah. data in surveillance, uh, okay. I, I think that for the surveillance, uh, we, we uh, what I heard, we cannot do like uh, uh, the nationwide surveillance like that, but we, 
they might have the uh, what we call uh, focus on some uh, side that uh, might have the potency to develop the full side right at and the data have been uh, updated by uh, most of them are done through the done by the Ministry of Public Health and uh, public side and broadcast every day to the uh, to the uh, uh, people general people in the they they customize the data to be easy for the people to understand but for the management I think that we have many uh, some uh, sector that responsible for the surveillance in the human and animal right maybe we uh, even we have good I think that they have good surveillance system and data management, but we don't have the very, uh, very uh, well integration or sharing between the, the, the surveillance data from human and animal yet. I think that is, uh, this is uh, the thing that quite challenge and is uh, going to be the weakness of most of the country that have different sector that responsible from for different uh, sorts of the data, surveillance data, and it's quite difficult for them to share and to get the same uh, data, like merge data together, right? Okay, conclusion is the uh, surveillance data, surveillance, uh, surveillance data management is okay for Thailand, but may do, might not have the 100% complete because we cannot totally integrate the data from the human and animal uh, surveillance together. Right? Okay, um, thanks for the answer. We would like to step to the next questions. Okay, this is the fourth question from Ibu Refi Kinansi. What do you think about the increase in COVID-19 cases abroad, as is currently happening in the Netherlands and other European countries? Is it because the policy or is it because not allowed to wear mask anymore? Okay, so for me, <laughs> uh, because it's about the country context, Right. I think that uh, I, I respect its country, the policy of each country. I think that um, no country uh, would like, uh, I mean, the, every country would like their people to have well-being and safe from COVID. Right. And uh, said why the, in, uh, the case, I think that uh, because the COVID-19 pandemic is new for everyone, we don't expect that it's going to uh, be happen. And we thought that we have very good system, right? But we might not prepare for the emergency or the new, uh, uh, new type of the pandemic. And when it suddenly happened, right? You think about the country management, it's quite big, right? So what they can do is they gather the people that uh, the expert that they can gather and it's already the solution. When they say that we don't want the people to wear masks, maybe because of the, we have different standard to allow also. In some country uh, and some, some publication also said that, ah, oh, no need, it cannot prevent. No, I, I remember at the beginning, someone said that wearing masks is not effective, something. And then the people try to, uh, the country like Europe, and they try to, 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 to implement and do the intervention. And I think that is step of learning like us, try out and learn. Right? And I think that the country, uh, when we do something at the country level or national level, also quite difficult. Even we know that wearing masks is going to be good, but some country also we have culture and belief. 
right? We have to balance between uh, socio factor, right? Uh, so how to balance the feeling of the people and the public health practice, right? That is the one thing that maybe lead to the what we call ineffective uh, intervention. I, I don't want to say that it's failure, right? Phai Thailand also have failure. Uh, we, Tongun, we also have the mistake how to do that. And we then, I said that, uh, but I think that they try to uh, bond back and try to do something for their country. And that is uh, the thing that can, I can answer right now. So maybe uh, wearing masks, if not, maybe one, one, one uh, problem, uh, one, one uh, source or one reason that the uh, case increase. And some country also, uh, what we call open the country, right? And then uh, because we thought that the vaccination already can prevent the people. And one, the vaccination, even we have the trial, clinical trial already is work well in the lab, but in the situation, of the community setting, uh, it doesn't fit, doesn't align with that. So I think that is a something like a resource. And no one, no country have the uh, best or maybe the plan, exact plan for to respond for the COVID-19. That's why they call novel uh, viral uh, disease uh, pandemic. So that is, uh, that. That are the thing that I can think of, and it can uh, lead to the ineffectiveness of the intervention or prevention of the or stop or control of the uh, COVID nineteen. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for the answer. We would like to step to another question. Okay. This is the fifth question from Bapak Sunday J Kwerkula. What are some issues associated with healthcare financing? Yeah. I uh, maybe I need uh, the more. Uh, what What do you mean? That's what some issue or the financing, right? That yeah, for Baba Sunday, maybe you can raise your hand and unmute yourself or type in the chat, like what kind of healthcare financing that you want to ask about. Okay, Bapak, Sunde, Bapak Sande already uh, raised. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, you can unmute yourself, excuse me. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Dan. Uh, when I talk of healthcare financing, I'm talking about, uh, like you said, the right people doing the right job. Uh, there are some uh, institutions, some country where uh, the financial aspect is not uh, is not knowledgeable about the health aspect. So when you talk about budget allocation, we talk about money uh, to be spent on healthcare system. Uh, the finance man will be so tactical, he feels like uh, it's a waste uh, because he doesn't know the uh, risk associated. So that's why uh, I was asking what are some of the issues associated with healthcare financing, especially in Italy or in the fight of COVID-19 and what will be the next step uh, if the is a third wave of uh, COVID-19. Thank you. Thank you very much for your clarification. Uh, I think that uh, from the uh, the uh, leadership meeting of the Global Health Security Agenda, what I heard, right? So maybe I just pass the information from that. Uh, one thing is right that you mentioned, uh, especially for lower income and middle income, uh, uh, country, so we don't have enough money uh, to manage. Even for the vaccine, to to access to the healthcare or some, so that we call the uh, financial issue, right? Don't have enough budget 
and maybe uh, we uh, we need to find more. And uh, for for the, uh, that is one thing. Another thing is the when we uh, have to uh, what do you call? Uh, we don't have the analysis of cost effectiveness of the intervention or the implementation that we we did. Maybe some we might allocate more money on that, uh, but uh, we, we uh, in fact, we have to allocate the money country, have to allocate money somewhere else like that. That is another thing. It's, uh, it's mean that the, uh, the way that the uh, country use the money right and how to, uh, to analyze for the cost effectiveness. And to, to uh, from the suggestion from the GSSA uh, that uh, how to do with the financial uh, limitation or the, uh, when the people, they suggest that uh, normally some country, uh, they might not talk about money-oriented solution. Maybe they ask to think about in the country, that uh, we have low, uh, like a lower income, right? We think about the, some country have the, what we call the uh, herbal or the, uh, 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 what we call um, local, local uh, intervention or health practice that can adopt to do. To, to help the people and uh, uh, it's time uh, people say that uh, when we don't have the money enough, maybe uh, the country have to take a look and ally to see which one that uh, the practice or the, uh, the product that already in your country that can use for the prevention and controls of the COVID-19. Uh, uh, like that. So, but it's still the challenge for the people, right? Uh, I remember that the lead of the financial sustainability uh, task force, task force is how to decide this is a world bank. So they keep uh, thinking about that. But uh, what I can remember is these are uh, two, three things that uh, to overcome the financial uh, limitation, right? Answer your question is one is a uh, financial limitation or not enough budget. Don't have enough, you don't have budget that allocate for the uh, response to the emer uh, emergency or the COVID 19 pandemic before, right? And then how to allocate the money and what is the cost effectiveness to uh, for that? Uh, implementation or intervention, that is another uh, thing uh, of the financial issue related to COVID-19, yeah. Okay, um, thanks for the answer. Okay, we would like to step for the next question. Okay, this is six questions from Ibu Elfiza Rahmadun. Best Based on the data before, how um, is the predictions of the third wave COVID pandemic in Southeast Asia, especially in this country? And lastly, what's the first step to build one health system? Could you, could you just left the question? So maybe uh, for me, uh, to to see first. Yeah, okay, I, I think but either you can attach the slide. Yeah, you can show the slide. Yeah, and stay. Yeah. And then, okay. Yes, thank you very much for that. Uh, basically, for how we pick basic third web in Southeast Asia and country Indonesia. Uh, let me ask for the clarification for Lamado. Uh, so you asked about what are the basic information that need for the prediction or not? Uh, what 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 uh, uh, area that you would like to uh, to talk specifically or ask specifically? Okay, um, for Ibu Elfiza Rahmadu, 
could you please um, unmute yourself or raise your hand? Ibu Elfiza. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. Would you, uh, okay. Yes, I'm here. Okay, Ibu Elfiza, would you like to unmute yourself? Um, or Ibu, El Ibu Elfiza say the signal is not um great because it's raining here. Okay. Um, so Ibu Elfiza, could you please type in the chat? Bisa dijelaskan yang maunya maksudnya prediksi di Asia Tenggara khususnya di Indonesia apa yang dibutuhkan untuk prediksi atau prediksinya seperti apa atau gimana ya pertanyaannya? Uh, when she type on that, I I, I could uh, answer about the second question of her first. What the first step of one health that we can start right uh, for the country? Like uh, I think that for Indonesia, you already have some. Uh, I'm not sure it's in Indonesia or not, or her home country. So for Indonesia, it's already have some uh, what we call uh, information, like a background on what is the uh, data of the children already, right? So, and you already have the uh, infrastructure and the resource uh, like an uh, impress already, but uh, maybe what we can do if we would like to uh, like uh, prepare and make it effectively is the way is first uh, to gather or uh, like uh, set up the uh, what we call the meeting of the stakeholder, identify the stakeholder who are involved in this and identify uh, the collect the data or the surveillance and the uh, uh, intervention or implementation that already did in the previous time. You remember that the WSO said that document, right? The implementation and lesson learned, right? And then first is the, to do the situation analysis, right? What you have, what is strong and what is the weakness of the country or uh, even uh, for a city like that start from the summer thing and then you when you know already you will know how to start if you first if you know one uh, one thing is very strong you can keep it maintain it right and one is weak uh, because you already have all the stakeholder who are the expert from uh, the uh, re relevant uh, discipline already, sector already. So they can give you the point of view or a solution how they might come up like a two or three solution and then from the expert or multi, multidisciplinary expert discussion might narrow down to one uh, a, a few so solution and then you can start to do the tie out. So uh, uh, that is the answer for first step, right? If you already have the thing, just correct that resource and then analyze first, right? And then you will see, analyze the strength and weakness like a sword or whatever. Right, uh, depend on and then do the prioritization, right? So, and then maybe decide for the roadmap or the thing that you would like to uh, achieve, right? That is uh, the thing that I, I, I think, yes. Uh, problem is there any? Uh, okay, so uh, that is the first thing. Uh, that I answer right. I'm not sure that she have uh, uh, the the first one uh, or not at about. I'm not sure that she asks about the information that are uh, required. What are the information that require for for this or not? Yeah. Okay. For the first questions, um, Ibu Elfiza would like to know what do we need to understand to predict the third wave in Indonesia? Yeah. Okay, um, Professor Sung Dun? Yes. Yeah. So for the first questions, um, the previous questions um, that we didn't understand uh, the meaning. So, 
the ask the asker of the questions would like to know what do we need to understand to predict the third wave in Indonesia okay. or in Southeast Asia. Yeah. So what what we we need to know or understand what the information that we yes. we need to uh to to uh, understand right to to prevent or to to see if it's third wave or not. I think the one thing. I already mentioned in the first one, right? So one is the data from surveillance, uh, the record, like case record, and also the uh, the uh, the the uh, document about the the implementation. And if we have the chance, go to see if it's success or not, what the result of intervention, the assessment result of the intervention or the implementation in that one, those are the things that can predict that it's gonna uh, have the third wave of pandemic or not. Another one is, uh, don't forget about assessment of the workforce capacity that you have enough or not. Right, even the the system is good, but the people, right, the workforce don't have enough capacity, maybe. And another one, the most important one, is the perception and practice of the people, the community. I think that the most important and is quite uh, uh what we call is uh, some factor that we could not control and it hard to control also but it's gonna be uh if we cannot uh, work well on that i think it may be lead to the third wave or fourth wave of this one because if the, the problem will repeat repeat even we we have very good intervention we have the staff very good but we don't have the per, uh, exception and the uh, compliant uh, practice from the community, right? So that is the thing that I can answer right now. Okay, um, thank you for the answer. Um, we step to another question. I think the seventh question now. Okay. Okay, the seventh question um, from Ibu Nur Aziza Azahra. What are the main challenges and obstacles faced when implementing the One Health approach in the preparedness programs to face the challenges of the next wave of COVID-19 pandemic or other future pandemics? Okay. The obstacle for One Health approach, Professor. So uh, any obstacle uh, for me, at the implementer and the people that try to promote this uh, method, I will say that it's challenge, right? As I already mentioned at the beginning, right? One Health approach is the uh, the collaborative effort of the people, right? Uh, from different discipline, different sector, different level, right? National. So the problem, the challenge is the how to coordinate amongst that. And another challenge that uh, we talk when we do at the uh, country level or the international collaboration among country, right? Like a global health security agenda. We don't have the, uh, most of the people do the country, each country. I think that Professor Akus also here also, and some people that work on the global health security, uh, uh, security agenda know that the country do by uh, like their voluntary and uh, what we call they devote. And we don't have any uh, financial support for each country, right? So uh, how to bring the people, the effort from different uh, country uh, to do, like uh, you, you see that global health security have many packages, right? So how they, uh, they uh, script themselves or even the budget from their own uh, like a uh, touch or the, the the thing that they have to use in country to do the extra thing effort on uh, collaborative with the people decide the intervention right uh, how to uh, manage this 
uh, across the continents and country. I think that are the challenge. One is coordination. The second one, how to balance between their own uh, the, the, the activity in country activity and the effort that they need to, uh, to uh, do at the regional or global level, right? Because now uh, for the COVID-19 pandemic, we need the global effort, not only the country, national and regional. So, and without the financial support for this particular Part or effort, so that is another challenge. So that could lead to the financial sustainability of this action, global action. So that that I hope that don't answer right. The collaboration, the problem of collaboration is collaboration and coordination, right? So how we make that effective? Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you for the answer. We would like to move to a direct questions. So if you have questions um, that you want to ask directly to Professor Sung Dun Mungso. Okay, okay. Saya ambil alih ya. Hello. Yeah. Okay. 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 Thank you, Professor uh, Sung Dun Mungso. Look, there is a high uh, enthusiastic yeah, to your presentation. So. There's many question, and I think still, yeah, I hope also uh, some our student can go to going to Mahidol University to learn from you. Okay, okay. Thank you, Petari Bunga. Uh, silakan ada yang mau tanya ya, bisa dalam bahasa Inggris atau nanti bisa ditranslate oleh Petari Bunga. Ya, yeah. uh, silakan. Prof. Haryo, apakah masih mengikuti? Halo. Prof. Hussein Gassem, apakah ada Prof. Hussein Gassem? Ya. Yeah. While uh, waiting for the uh, next question, I analyze uh, from a management of COVID-19 that the country with the high acceptance level to the government is uh, have a good uh, management yeah for uh, control the covid uh, 19 pandemic yeah comparing uh, for the country that the acceptance level is uh, low yeah we look uh, can we look at the comparing the usa have a good resources but the, maybe the acceptance level is not Good, then the management is uh, uh, rather uh, lower than the other country with a good acceptance. Uh, how uh, how do you comment this uh, analysis, Prof. Munsum? Okay, uh, I'm not sure that if I said that uh, in another day, U.S. Uh, colleagues gonna said, "Oh, thank you, <laughs> you blame me." <laughs> oh, but but it's just my point of view, right? So uh, I don't want to blame the at the country level. I I I said that maybe I, I'm not sure that is uh, one thing, right? Uh, I give the example of Thailand and or uh, uh, Southeast Asia country also. We have very good uh, compliance. Right. Normally, Asian countries say that when we say that do this, we always do. Right. We 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 don't have objection, but we say that oh, let and see. That is a uh, Asian uh, style and culture. We already open for every intervention. Right. We we start. Uh, late, but we always <laughs> we we always comply with that. That is the one thing that maybe how at the acceptance, high acceptance. I I would like to call it open for the intervention. Right, don't have very strong. Uh, what we call uh. Uh, what we call don't have very, uh, very strong action to against with any implementation, right? 
uh, that is a uh, one uh, what we call culture and the style of ASEAN uh, country compared to the Western and the Western because uh, they have very uh, uh, what we call confident and one thing if we don't have enough knowledge or the evidence based I say that evidence based uh, uh, information right so they might not uh, they might lead and then to start right that is a one thing and also the uh, another thing is the uh, because of one health normally uh, uh, the project USAID from my point of view uh, start when they they launch they launch with the Southeast Asia and Africa they call Afun. Why they start with that? Because they thought is the uh, host port of the disease where the disease originate from, and when they train the people from our side our side, we can prevent and stop the pathogen or the potential pathogen that gonna cause the future pandemic. That is in year 2011 or around 2010 already. And then how they do that? They send the expert, they try to ask us to define the competency and prepare our staff our people are uh, too familiar with the idea, right? How to collaborate with the people, how to be humble, right? How to work, how to do, to be resilient like that. And then another thing is most of the pathogen that occur right now, you heard that what uh, the people say that it's from tropical area. That is our zone. We are familiar. We stay with them we, for a long, long time, century, decade, like that. And we know how to do with that. Some people talk about herd immunity. That I think that by our self, ASEANs, that we stay. Someone said that COVID-19, coronavirus is not a new one in between virus. There are several things that are common in our area already, but it has some, just the COVID-19 that, that, that uh, is seem to be no well like that, but be familiar with the, a member of the uh, Corona virus already. So our cell, our immunity can handle with that. We have very high, higher tech pool compared to the Western, right? Because we stay even in African, in Africa continent, the people have very high immunity toward the infectious disease than in Southeast Asia or in the Western side, because the environment that we stay is immunized us, right? So, and our immunity have stronger Right. So one is the uh, I would like to say that it's not only exception or uh, open minded for the thing that is a culture of the ASEAN, but we had been trained because uh, we would like to thank the Western USAID, US government that launched the project to support us to prepare ourselves. We are beneficial. And we, they thought that the disease won't go to them yet. But when they have the pandemic, they don't prepare themselves yet, you know? So because they focus on us, that is another thing. The last thing is about the ourselves, the nature evolution of our world. Because the people stay in the endemic area, we have a uh, stronger immunity toward a pathogen, right? Then a Western, that is the uh, three things that I think that is contribute to uh, the, 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 the thing that you ask. Thank you, Dr. Lee. Hello, hello. Yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Prof. Uh, other question, Pak Sakundano Adi. 
Here, uh, uh, Dr. Sakundano Adi, uh, please asking a question, Pak Adi. Oke, okay. mungkin ada pertanyaan dari Siti Rahayu ya. Is there any health problem increasing during the pandemic in Thailand? Ya, yeah. beside the pandemic COVID, there is a other disease rise up ya, yeah, Prof, because uh, the government focus only on the COVID-19 and uh, uh, forget the other disease ya. Yeah. Can you explain the pro this problem in Thailand? Okay, so uh, one thing I think that yes, uh, we uh, when we focus a lot on the uh, response and control of the COVID 19 this is the light threatening one, and we forgot about local disease. Maybe the people uh, and the workforce, the most of the capacity, national capacity. Uh, go to the uh, COVID-19 response, right? And uh, uh, it reduce the capacity to prevent and control of other one, right? So, but uh, that is the thing, but don't have any serious uh, yet that even we, uh, we, we focus 90% on the COVID-19 from the, from the tagging of the disease, right? We have the case, of the, for example, uh, um, rabies, like that. Uh, rabies, we don't have the uh, dead head, but we, we still have. That's why the, some people try to build awareness that uh, don't be panic and don't be, uh, don't, uh, I mean, the, uh, yes, you can focus, you can uh, aware about, uh, no, you can, uh, You, you might realize about the COVID-19, but don't forget to aware about the uh, local disease like a rabies and dengue like that. And some uh, manpower also allocate for the uh, like a local uh, and uh, uh, disease like a rabies, uh, um, um, uh, dengue like that still right so uh, that is uh, the the problem that can rest right now when we focus a lot on the covid-19 response but uh, not in the level of serious right that and for the mental health i'm sure right now uh, we have that Right when the people uh, we we call quarantine and uh, we have to maintain the social distancing uh, home, we have to work from home. Right, most of the especially for the students and the parent have the mental uh, like a health problem because of quite spread also and how to manage with the learning. Uh, and uh, uh, what we call living expand, right? I'm sure, but uh, we we have talks about this uh, in terms of the uh, psychiatric uh, expert, right? So they also aware about this that we have, but uh, some people might. I, I'm not sure that is uh, is not direct link between mental health and su suicide or not. But some of the people that they can manage that they 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 uh, they undergo the suicide like that. But uh, this is uh, I think that when we have the social distancing, uh, so uh, this is another uh, like a. Uh, like uh, 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 another side of the coin of the uh, uh, effect uh, from the social distancing, which is the uh, mental health problem, right? So I'm sure that we have. And another thing is she talks about vaccine coverage. I'm sure that uh, at, uh, we touched a little bit about the financial limitation. Thailand also, even we have and now to be uh, what we call lower middle income <laughs> country. But in fact, we still have the same uh, uh, like a budget 
right? And when we uh, have to uh, buy or uh, to uh, to get the vaccine that enough for the whole country, the vaccine coverage is quite uh, uh, at the beginning. It's not good yet, uh, but now I think that forty percent or some is a sixty percent already. And the Ministry of Public Health and uh, Ally and also try to increase. And I saw that they said already that how many percent that they would like to achieve by this year, right? That uh, both uh, adult and uh, children, right? That and uh, uh, for life, yes, for life. Uh, for life in Thailand, including the uh, for life staff, it's mean including the village health volunteer who helped the public health sector to screen uh, uh, for the what we call primary health care of the people at the community, right? That. So those are the things that uh, maybe uh, raised up a written bit or a certain level uh, when we focus so much on the uh, COVID-19 response yet. I hope that thank I you. answer. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Prof. Uh, sebelum ke pertanyaan Pak Taufik, nih, Prof. Haryo, would you like to ask something? Professor Suharyo. Yeah, Prof. Haryo. Ya, yeah, Prof. Silakan. Ya. Dokter siapa? Sangbun. Monsum. 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 Yeah. Uh, you know that uh, in Europe, many many countries now that with uh, occurs of COVID-19. I think. What do you think? Cause of the this, this condition in Europe, many many country uh, occurs of with Third wave, I think. What do you think yeah. about this? Yeah. I think that this question quite uh, related or uh, 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 close to the period question, right, on the Europe and America, right? Uh, I think that the third wave of that one, uh, maybe uh, as I mentioned that most of the Western uh, uh, people, right, population, most of them are vaccinated, right? Most of them are vaccinated. And just a small portion that are unvaccinated yet. And uh, when uh, the people vaccinate, right, uh, the people, uh, they assume that we have a, a certain dose of the vaccination uh, complete according to the plan uh, and uh, according to the research. The clinical trial, the antibody, the immunity are enough to prevent uh, the uh, infection, right? That, but in fact, I think that one thing is uh, uh, no one sure or uh, uh, we don't have e uh, enough. Uh, we don't have the uh, evidence base or enough data on the assessment of the vaccine the efficiency uh, in terms of the to put up uh, the, the antibody and how long that it stay and it's, it's the neutralizing antibody, uh, how long that it stay in our body. That's why when the people have complete their vaccination program and they thought that is, they can go back to the normal life and open and uh, just lower a guard a little bit. It's mean uh, like a physical, uh, like a social distancing or mask like that. Uh, so it's um, because uh, the vaccine, right, uh, is uh, efficiency depends on many things, right? Uh, you are uh, like a personal uh, background, uh, genetic, and many things, right? So, so that's why uh, vaccine efficiency uh, in the community is an, one thing that I think. And another one is maybe I cannot, uh, I cannot blame that, but maybe a reason that when we people, even me or someone have fully vaccinated and we detect the antibody and high level already, we thought, that, oh, maybe safe. Now we can lower our mass a little bit when we stay our family, right? So that is another thing. And Thailand, uh, we try to run the campaigns that most uh, be careful 
like most of the spreading of the COVID-19 is a family. It's not somewhere else because when you are stay with family, you didn't aware, you thought that is safe. So that is the, the things that uh, just uh, maybe two months ago, Thailand tried to say that, uh, be careful, yes. That, that is, uh, I'm not sure that is uh, answer you or not the two, two things, right? Efficiency, no one can ensure that the efficiency of the vaccine, like in our body, like or at the community setting, the real situation compared to the clinical trial result. Another one is the, uh, what we call maintaining the social distancing or the non-pharmaceutical um, protective measure. Uh, maybe not uh, 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 maintain at the uh, enough uh, 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 like level uh, because of the uh, confidence of the or the uh, uh, vaccination like that. Yes. Terima kasih. Uh, thank you, bro. Prof. Arya sudah menjawab pertanyaan ya. Halo. Oke. Okay. Yes. That's another question is uh, how about the herd immunity in Thailand? Herd immunity in Thailand. It has been done or uh, not yet. Halo. Herd immunity in Thailand. Oh, sorry, uh, thank you very much for uh, notifying me. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure for the herd um, uh, immunity, right? That the people talk a lot that we would like, right? But uh, yes, maybe, uh, but no one uh, check for the, or uh, can mention about the herd immunity, like that. But I think that what we said that is maybe uh, the immunity that we got, maybe because we are in the endemic area and uh, the government, Ministry of Public Health also, uh, uh, what we call uh, try to uh, promote the vaccination uh, for all uh, the, the people uh, um, in the Thai society, right? That so I'm sorry I don't have a, a direct answer and information on the herd community that uh, what we we have or not, but uh, from from uh, my experience and work with the government, we don't talk much, but we say that we, we try to focus on the uh, use non-pharmaceutical uh, protective measure and together with the vaccination, that is a thing that uh, we focus to deal with the COVID-19, yeah. Okay, thank you, Prof. The other question is we have still a, uh... 10 to 15 minutes, yeah. Uh, there is a, a question from uh, Harley Utami. There's about the uh, people's change in paradigm after vaccine activity, yeah. That is, uh, there is a, a, a shifting uh, behavior from uh, after people get, get vaccination, like a uh, lack of a uh, uh, wearing mask or the other prevention measure like that, okay? Any, you asked about, is there any, right, paradigms about that or not, right? Yes, yes, because uh, look, uh, so many people after get vaccination feel uh, very safe, very safe to the uh, transmission so they uh, forget the distance yeah. like uh, like that yeah I think that yes the uh, the uh, there is uh, some paradigm like that because uh, we we uh, we need to understand the nature of the people like right? we are we are 
we are staying with COVID-19, we wearing mask even before, even I travel, right? Uh, on the when I'm sleep, I'm still put the mask on like this for two years already. And the people when they got vaccination and they would like to relax, uh, some people do that. But uh, we have that, but you know that the social interaction is quite important for Thailand. Right now, uh, I just heard from the radios in, in Thai now. They said that it's a look like wearing a mask is a, a norm, a new norm of Thai people already. Uh, even they, they feel relaxed. They don't like to put uh, like a lower the guard or mask like that. And other people say they scared and they just look at that there is a social uh, reactivity. So, and then it will force the people that try to relax and put the mat on. So I think that is the, uh, because uh, uh, we still have some people that uh, we have like 70% and by the uh, government campaign that and communication said that even you got fully vaccinated, we cannot ensure that you save on that. So try to maintain the uh, uh, like a protective measure to protect yourself. That is, uh, we keep hurt every day, right? So we may have those paradigm, but uh, after in the society, uh, most of the people in the society will have the reactivity toward the people that uh, try to uh, like, uh, uh, what we call, uh, relax. And then they will, they will have to put it on, right? So, and keep maintain that. That is uh, the thing that I think that is gonna be uh, good. Uh, like, uh, it's like uh, feedback each other, right? So, but it's a good way, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have a similar problem with uh, social interaction, yeah, because the culture of uh, Thailand and Indonesia, I think, is similar. Yeah, people are connected uh, very tight to the other. Yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you. The other is uh, the final. I think the last is a question from Mega Mega Ayub. Yeah, please. Uh, can you explain directly uh, your question in uh, if Africa have a better immunity and then complete vaccination, could you allow us to completely live off the like lockdown even we expected an other wave? Yeah. Then Maika ask you: the, Is it possible if they get a fully vaccination and then live left the lockdown? Yeah, lockdown action like that. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So I think that uh, I think that this is because I mentioned that uh, normally uh, African people right have a, a higher immunity toward the pathogen, right? Because uh, you are uh, in the endemic area of the more severe, like a SAR, right? That the things, the virals, uh, uh, infectious disease uh, than other country of the world, uh, other regions of the world. And, and then you say that if we have the complete vaccination, for me, um, I, I don't have the authority to allow you uh, to do that or not, but for me, just have recommendation at, at we discussed before in the, even in Thailand, even the people have the fully vaccination, the lesson learned from many country in the Western side, right? They have 90% uh, or most of the, them are vaccinated they still have, they still have the, uh, the third wave or, uh, the, of the COVID-19, right? So uh, uh, um, for me, I think that we can uh, relax, loosen that uh, once uh, is the, it's depend on also. Uh, I understand that uh, USI, you have bet a stronger immunity toward the pathogen and the pathogen also have uh, smarter than from your side also have smarter and stronger than other side of the world also. That is the adaptability of uh, human and the pathogen, right? So for me, for safe, 
So uh, I don't, uh, I, if I'm, I were your authority, maybe if to ensure that the people will save, maybe we just release some uh, policy, right? And try to release, relax a little bit, remove one by one until to ensure that if all the protective measure are removed, you still save no one uh, like a Scott sick or die from that, right? That. So I hope that because um, I'm not an authority, but uh, my idea is that the things on behalf of uh, the policy maker or your leader, right? So uh, try to keep all the people survive and safe. It's not easy, right? You cannot remove everything at the same time, but maybe they just maintain something and try to remove one by one. It depends on the situation in your country. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. I think it, all the question is, uh, again, uh, very thank you, Prof. Uh, your presentation is very good, complete, yeah. And then a clear answer, yeah. Uh, I hope uh, we are in Indonesia can uh, take uh, learning from your uh, young presentation and then get the actions to uh, face uh, the uh, pandemic uh, calling, yeah? especially for preparedness uh, for uh, avoiding the that with, with next. Okay, thank you again. Yeah? Yeah. Terima kasih. Uh, give the applause to the professor. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very thank you, much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Saya ke itu. Yeah. And I thank hope you. that is useful for you all. And at the point of view of the researcher and the educator, I would like to say that. But if you would like to get more insight in terms of the uh, actual implementation, right? So the governmental, like uh, the expert from, uh, together with the expert from public health, gonna give you more, right? Some gonna be my, uh, in terms of the workforce development, because Thailand is lead for the workforce development for the GSSA, and Tohun is uh, directly responsible for that to prepare the student and help assist the government to prepare the workforce. But for the health uh, intervention implementation, we, we step back at the supporter, right? Maybe I can uh, say only in the point of view of my opinion, right? That, or the fact that bit on the fact that we have, right? Yes. Thank you very much for your giving me opportunity and thank you the we, right? I, I'm, I'm uh, the chair, uh, director of the master program in primology that uh, uh, bring me and give me the opportunity to discuss and sharing the, my experience and knowledge with you here. Okay. Um, on behalf of the com committee, we would like to thank you, Dr. Sangdun Munsum and Dr. Handy for the speech and discussion. It's very eye-opening to learn about COVID-19 and One Health from our neighboring country, Thailand, in which we can adopt good value to our work or area of expertise or to increase our knowledge. Okay. Um, yeah, would you like to give a closing statement or um, a key takeaways for us here to inspire us because we are here um, very, very inspired with what you have done, Professor Sundun. Yeah. And uh, you would like me to give the take home message of final speed, right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, for me, uh, in fact, I don't prepare for that yet, right? So I think uh, for, for me, at the, uh, the educator and trainer in the One Health, I think that now it's time for us, right? So uh, when I talk about the One Health idea and training, uh, I think that uh, Ito Hun member also here, they also experience the same thing, that when we talk uh, before the COVID-19 pandemic, the people say that, okay, uh, 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 it's, it's far away from, from us. But now, uh, everything, so One Health approach, uh, is one success without the 
uh, what we call the support and practice of you all. And I also uh, give the uh, take home message for the student who are the future workforce that you are the uh, chain agent for the next one. We will come all and you will pass this idea and this, uh, this action. And it's not for us, for Adan, uh, for lecturer or for the institute, but for yourself, and for your home country. Those, those are the things that I would like to give at the final uh, word for today. And thank you very much. Okay, um, thank you, Professor Sungdun Monsum. Thank you for inspiring us here. Okay. Um, okay, so for all the participants, we still have one session left, which is quiz. So uh, we will have prizes to win. So make sure that all of you remain seated until the end of the event. But before we step to this um, quiz, I think, I think we have to um, put the flyer first. Yeah, flyernya, but, but either, flyer dulu kali. Okay. Okay, maybe um, all the participants want to take some drinks, maybe want to breathe in for a little bit, or maybe like read, not, read the notes that we take from the previous um, sessions so that we can understand the quiz better. Um, while the committee is preparing for the quiz um, here, I would like to say that uh, please make sure that um, all of you already filled the attendance confirmations in the Google form. So the certificates uh, will be sent directly to your email. Um, pastikan Bapak Ibu sudah mengisi Google form gih, untuk daftar hadir attendance listnya. Nanti sertifikat akan dikirimkan melalui email. Untuk Google formnya bisa dilihat di chat. Gih. Yeah. Attendance list confirmations. Um, is in the chat box in the Google form. So make sure that you already filled the attendance list. Um, so the certificates will be sent directly to the email. Okay, um, we're waiting for the committee to prepare for the quiz. Um, let me share valuable information about our master program in epidemiology in the Ponegoro University. So operator, could you please um, share the flyer? Yeah, so here in Master of Epidemiology, oh, where is, okay, where is the Google Sheet, please? So, okay, the committee, please um, reply in the chat to share the Google form. Okay, we have, so, <laughs> okay, um, operator, could you please share the screen again, the flyer? Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, wait a second for raising hand. Um, we will get to the question later. So for the Master of Epidemiology in Diponegoro University, we have uh, four concentrations um, in epidemiology. Epidemiology is learning about the um, diseases like data and surveillance in, yep, in the field and then we have four concentrations. Um, first, the general epidemiology, we learn about the epidemiology of the diseases and the biostatistics and uh, the general stuff of the epidemiology. And then we also have the field epidemiology um, about the maybe disaster and the um, in the field that we see directly. And then um, the third is the clinical epidemiology is how we can re re relate epidemiology with the clinical aspect of it. For example, the labor laboratory, all the clinical issues or the clinical manifestations. And also the fourth is the OHFETP or One Health Field Epidemiology and Training Program, which is um, related to the today's discussions about One Health, which is um, the intersect interlink between human and animals and environment and epidemiology. So to apply for Master of 
Epidemiology in the Ponegoro University. Um, if, um, you can be from um, S1 or undergraduate degree from all disciplinar disciplinary, and then or D4, D4, dari um, health sciences, for example, pharmacy, health analysis, obstetric, physiotherapy, etc., etc. And then for the programs, we have by course, uh, which uh, is basically attending lectures and then um, submitting submitting tasks um, uh, and yeah by course. And then second is by research, which which is um, doing the research uh, throughout uh, the whole program. And then third. Um, international class, which we already have um, several international students. And then if you are interested to continue a master program in epidemiology in Diponegoro University, our registration is open all the time. And our registration website is, uh, okay. <laughs> okay, um, Mbak Ida, bawah, okay. Yeah, you can apply to admissions undip.or.id and then you can follow the instructions there um, the degree here will, will be uh, MPH or MKM Magister Kesehatan Masyarakat and then the registration fees will be around 750000 or 750000 rupiah or in dollars will be around um, $60 US dollars Okay, this is um, make sure that you um, screenshot this link um, if you want to continue a master degree here. And then this is our email, magisterundip at gmail.com. Or if you fancy to visit our office, um, you can, you can um, visit us in Imam Barjo, nomor 5 Semarang, or call us in 024 841 Yeah. Okay, we have. Um, people raising hand um, for from okay okay um, I think we have uh, a person raised hand uh, Mr. Maiga Ayub uh, yeah you can unmute yourself is there anything that we can help okay Okay, maybe maybe it's a mistake. Okay, so for the committee, um, mungkin bisa di share kembali ya tentang ininya Google formnya in the chat box. Yeah, we will share again the Google form for the attendance list. Okay, okay, Google form Google form will be delivered again ya. Yeah. In the chat box, so make sure you fill the attendance list. Okay, so now we are about to start the quiz session. So make sure that you um, are ready. Make sure yeah that you already like take some notes. And then if you have um, an answer, if you are sure what to say, please raise your hand. And then we and then we will unmute you. And then you can deliver your answer. So here we have several prizes to redeem. So if you um, win, you can redeem the prizes, and then you can contact the committee. Um, the prizes will be about uh, will be sent in e wallet, maybe like OVO, Dana, or GoPay. Maybe you can discuss it with the committee. Okay, okay. We will start the quiz now. Okay. We number one. We start with number one. Okay. When WHO declare COVID-19 pandemic? Um, okay, um, we have Ibu Tuti. Yeah. On 11 of March 2020. Okay, the committee, is it the right answer? Yes, answer. But answer. Okay. Okay, um, we have Bututi, yeah. So the committee, please. Um, okay, so so for the first questions already answered by Ibu Tuti Inaya. Um, Ibu Tuti Inaya, please contact our committee. And then, okay, let's step to the next questions. Question number two. Uh, 
um, what is one health concept? Bagaimana konsep one health? Oke, okay. um, Siti Rahayu first. Oke. Okay. Yeah. One health concept itu kolaborasi untuk penanganan dari sektor human, animal, and environment. Oke, okay. komite is correct? Yes, correct. Oke, okay. oke. Okay. Congratulations, um, Mbak Siti Rahayu. The committee will um, contact you or you can contact the committee directly. Okay, let's start with the questions number three. Um, ada empat konsentrasi di Magister Epid. Um, there are four concentrations in Master of Epidemiology in Undip. Um, what is it? What are they? Okay, another dan Ibu Siti Rahayu and Bu Tuti. Oke, okay, empat konsentrasi. Oke, okay, you can raise your hand. Mbak Gerda tadi. Iya, Ibu Gerda. Ibu Gerda, silahkan. Ya baik, terima kasih. Ada ada empat konsentrasi di jurusan Epidemiologi yaitu uh, ep pertama epidemiologi umum, kedua epidemiologi lapangan, ketiga epidemiologi klinik dan yang keempat adalah One Health FTP. Terima kasih. Oke, okay. um, komedis korek. Oke, okay, korek. Oke, okay, korek. Oke, okay. um, congratulations Ibu Gerda. Nanti hadinya bisa dikontak panitia ya atau panitia yang akan kontak Ibu Gerda. Oke, okay. question number four. How many packages action in Global Health Security Agenda, GSHA? Ada berapa package actions atau paket aksi di GHSA, Global Health Security Agenda? Oke, okay. Maiga Ayu. Ya, yeah, you can unmute yourself. Oke, okay. Maiga Ayu. Ya, yeah, oke. Okay. Yes, please. What's your answer? No, for that, for that for that one, I'm not sure. I think my hand was just um. Um, excuse me. Could you repeat once more? Hello. I'm saying for that question, I'm not sure. My hand was up for just a mistake. Oh yeah, okay. Okay, I'm gonna lower lower your hand. So for these questions, um Ibu Lato Konsina. Ibu Lato Konsina, you can unmute yourself. Baik, terima kasih. Ada ada 11 agenda paket aksi dalam GHSA. Ya, yeah. komedi is it correct? Yes, correct. 11 paket aksi. Ya, yeah, oke. Okay. Congratulations Ibu Lato Konsina. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, uh, nanti komedi akan Oh ya yeah, nih. So for um, all the winners, you can contact uh, Mas Chandra. Um, here's the number and then um, he will give the um, a wallet directly to you. Oke, okay, make sure you screenshot this. Oke, okay. um, okay, I'm gonna lower ibu. Oke, okay. okay, thank you. Oke, okay, you're welcome. Um, so the committee, um, you can share once more the Google form for the attendance list. Ya, yeah, for the attendance list bisa di share lagi ya untuk absennya peserta nanti untuk untuk kirim sertifikatnya. Oke, okay, panitia bisa di-share. Oke. Okay. Oke, okay, ya. Yeah. Thank you. Oke, okay, udah ya. Udah belum? Google Form. 
um, please make sure that you already fill the attendance list and then especially the email and the um, working email. Sudah ya? Oke. If you missed uh, the Google form, I think it will be up in the WhatsApp group. So, yeah. We are reaching the end of this event. Um, we would like to say, on behalf of the committee, we would like to say thank you for the attentions. We would like to say sorry for any mistakes during the seminar. If you have any messages, please let us know by um, turning on the microphone. Mungkin ada yang mau membagikan pesan dan pesan tentang acara ini dan pesan untuk acara selanjutnya. Mungkin Bapak Ibu um, or all participants, if you want to give us um, a feedback for our next events or this event. Yeah, is there any is there anyone want to share the feedback? Ya, yeah, mungkin ada Bapak Ibu yang mau share tentang kesan-pesannya. Iya, yeah, oke. Okay. Iya, yeah, oke. Okay. Baik, um, baik sekiranya. Oh ya. Yeah. Oke. Okay. Um, Maiga Ayub, Bap Mr. Maiga Ayub, you can. Yes, uh, a good morning, a good afternoon to everyone. Uh, we appreciate the presentation. I am Ayub and uh, I'm from Africa, East of Africa, Uganda. We appreciate so much the presentation. It has really opened up our eyes and uh, made us feel prepared, probably for the next uh, wave in case it comes. At the same time, it has given us an insight. If we are in the position of stakeholders who are actually have the, the ability and the authority to implement any policies, I think we would be better, we would be in the best position to, 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 to put up policies. And uh, that's our wish probably after completion of uh, ambassadors in epidemiology uh, at UNDIP. So thank you so much. Long live UNDIP. Long live everyone. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Thank you, Mr. Ayub. And then um, from um, Miss Maria. Oke, okay, Miss Maria. Oke, okay, Miss Maria, you can unmute. unmute. Oke, okay, you can unmute. Oke, okay. Miss Maria, maybe it was a mistake ya. Yeah. So, we are reaching the end of the event. Uh, we would like to say thank you. And then um, we would like to say sorry for any mistakes. We would like to remind you that we, that we still have one event um, on um, Tuesday, ya? Mbak Ida, ya? Ya, nanti... Internal MEPID. Oke. Okay. Uh, uh, please share Dr. Sangdung presentation with us. We already share in the chat box, ya? Share materi di share ada yang minta materi. Wait, oke. Okay. Oke, okay. dari Ibu Gerda bagus sekali kegiatan seperti ini. Ke depan perbanyak lagi kegiatan seperti ini. Terima kasih panitia. Oke okay, baik, terima kasih Ibu Gerda atas kedatangannya. Semoga bermanfaat. Baik, terima kasih atas kedatangan dan Bapak Ibu sekalian. Thank you for your attendance. On behalf of the committee, I would like to say thank you and good afternoon. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Ya, terima kasih Bapak Ibu semuanya. Sukses selalu. Terima kasih Mbak Bunga. <laughs> ya, terima kasih Bapak Ibu sekalian Bapak Taufik Walidaya Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Matur nuwun, Dr. Hendri
Terima kasih Dokter Henry. Sudah selesai, uh, bisa di langsung live nih semuanya. Oh ya, 